It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. Jeff Jarvis joins us with Patrick Beja, Liz Gaines. We'll talk about uh, the big announcements at Microsoft's Build Conference, take a look at the new Amazon Fire TV, and Kevin Rose will stop by to explain why he's not a parasite. It's all coming up next on Twit. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for This Week in Tech is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit, This Week in Tech, episode 452, recorded April 6th, 2014. Kevin Rose, Parasite. This Week in Tech is brought to you by Audible.com. Sign up for the Platinum Plan and get two free books. Visit Audible.com slash Twit2. And don't forget to follow Audible on Twitter. User ID Audible underscore Tom. And by GoToMeeting with HD Faces from Citrix. The powerfully simple way to meet with coworkers and clients anywhere. Share the same screen and see each other face to face with HD video conferencing. Even present from an iPad. Start your 30-day free trial of GoToMeeting today. Visit GoToMeeting.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code TWIT. And by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, visit Squarespace.com. Use the offer code TWIT. And by Jira, an Atlassian product. Jira is the project management solution for teams planning, building, and launching great products. To learn more about Jira and try it free for 30 days, visit Atlassian.com slash twit. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our live studio audience and all of you at home, the show where we talk about the week's tech news, and there's a lot of news to talk about. Let's say hello, hello to our panel, uh, Liz Gans. Now, Liz, do I say... Recode now, that's the official name. Yeah, you don't have to pronounce the slash, it's silent. Reslash code. No, you don't have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we love uh, Liz Gaines. She, uh, of course, a longtime uh, feature, uh, All Things Digital. And uh, when you, when All Things D recast itself into Recode, you went along for the ride. Yeah, all of us did, actually. Yeah. That says a lot, frankly. Yeah, it's actually. A pretty pretty awesome we're still in the same place doing kind of the same thing but we're bigger and badder and better and all that we have we've hired i think it's nine or ten people since january so we're going through a kind of a crazy growth spurt but all everyone who was there before is still there uh ina freed who's wonderful and john pachowski pachkowski and uh the, yep. whole, the whole group peter kafka you even know how to pronounce the name so yeah. kara of course but i gotta ask you a question and you don't have to answer this I don't see a lot of Walt. Is he is he semi retired? No, Walt's still there. <laughs> okay, I'm just, I'll tell him. I'll tell him he said that. I said, tell <laughs> tell Walt. Get on TV. Walt, you got to write more. You got to get busy. Yeah, I, I agree. I'd love to see his stuff more. Now he's not restricted by the weekly column. Right. So he should write all the. I feel like he's just yeah. kind of. He, he says he's going to tell us what it all means about Apple and all that. So so look for a column on that at some point. Kinda, he, come on, he's taking it easy. <laughs> We're talking about Walt Mossberg. <laughs> You know, honestly, Walt and Kara have done a ton, a ton of stuff around the company. So I think it might not be obvious from the day-to-day -day writing. He's running the business is what he's doing. Yeah, he yeah. runs, he does business and he's the top, he's the main guy in all the product stuff as well. So everything goes through him. So maybe right. he's been less out in front, but he's very busy. No, and I read his review, the HTC One, which is the, the my new phone too. And, uh, you know, but it just seems like he is, maybe it's just because he's not probably not writing any less than he did at the journal, but it just feels like I want to see more of him, I guess. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I want to see more Walt, too. Yeah, more Walt. Boy, Walt, boy, often. Anyway, we're great. We're thrilled to have Liz on and uh, we got lots of Liz gains there at recode.net. Don't go to I just went to recode.com. It's Nero. Yeah, <laughs> we're sending them lots of traffic. <laughs> <laughs> What? You know, URLs don't matter anymore, right? <laughs> they don't. Social web. They don't. It's, it's exactly right. Uh, oh, look who's here. Also from uh, France. Not Patrick. Patrick Beja. It is me. Hey, how's great it going? To, to give us the European angle on all this. It's going really well. 
We had a very we'll busy week this week. It kicked things off with Amazon's announcement of their new streaming TV. And I and I only apologize. Uh, I'm going to mention this because U.S. only, right? Well, it yeah, it's not available uh, for sale in in France or Europe. But I'm sure that if you you order it from the U.S., you can get it delivered. So Amazon's been pretty good uh, about those things, unlike other uh, companies. You know, it's a Me Too product. It's nothing to get real excited about. It's quad core uh, 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 Android. Uh, I fix it, tore it down, and it's a Snapdragon 600 in there, which is a, not the latest, greatest, but a nice little processor. It's got its dedicated GPU, which means you can game, and that's the biggest difference. Netflix, you know, Hulu Plus, all the all the usual streaming stuff, um, and of course, it's Amazon is on there, Amazon streaming. But the but the, they really push the gaming. In fact, this is a hundred bucks for the. It's you know roughly the size. It's like an Apple TV without rounded corners. Because they didn't want to get sued, and then they also sell for an additional forty bucks a game controller that looks just like an Xbox controller, only as if somebody sat on it. <laughs> Same buttons and, and everything. And there's voice control. Oh, let's not forget in the remote there's a microphone, and you could talk to it. Have you played with it at all, Liz? No, I'm actually really interested to see you holding it up because I hadn't seen it well, except on the you, demo. You know me; I bought it right away and and everything and. Um, did you go to the event uh, in New York? No, I didn't. And I actually don't know where it was. I had it in my head that it was in Seattle, but I can't say that I know that. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. I just thought it was in New York. We had Peter Kafka on during our conversation at the event. He wasn't there either. I said, is Kara there? He said, no. Is Liz there? No. <laughs> Maybe nobody knew where it was. Maybe that was part of the problem. Seattle would make sense. They made a giant living room with big screen TVs and stuff. I think it was New York because Christina Warren was there. So I think it was probably New York. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fire it up tonight, and I'm going to watch Game of Thrones. Oh, no, I'm not, because HBO Go no. is not on here. <laughs> Boo. It's, you know, it is, it, it's not revolutionary. It's not going to be the one that makes everyone convinced that they need a box like this. But it definitely seems like they've put a lot of work into it, and it's uh, fairly easy to use from all reports and is very it's very responsive and like some of the others that we've seen and uh, that that voice control that voice search uh, element is kind of so simple that it's it's almost a throwaway feature but it is interesting and it's almost the kind of thing that you wonder why has no one else done it before it's it's yeah, pretty obvious and if it works it's it's cool others have done it my samsung tv has a microphone in the remote. It also does gestures. And as I'm sitting, in fact, it happened last night watching TV, every once in a while, a handle point up, show up on the screen and controls will come up and I, and I have to go like this. No. <laughs> I've actually yeah. my, no. I got, I got a Samsung Smart TV too. And it's like, I, I think the Roku or, you know, you know, I mean, this is basically a Roku from Amazon. It actually works better because it only does yeah. the things you want it to do, right? Yeah. The Samsung Smart TV is like, oh, do you want to do a workout? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm watching TV. Stop it. It's yeah, really that's the problem with uh, with Samsung uh, a lot of the time is that they add so much, so many features. Uh, a lot of designers often say that, and Apple says that as well. One of the design principles that you have to adopt is that it, not including a feature is as important as mm. including a feature. Didn't so Steve Jobs in the say case that of Amazon, saying no is critical? Yeah, that's the exactly. Yeah, and so the the Amazon one seems like it's got just the right amount of stuff and and presented the right way and and working the right way. So it, it seems like it's a, a good choice if you want one of those uh, devices. I'm not sure that it's going to convince a lot of people that don't already have the need to to jump uh, to jump the boat and, and get one. Of course, Google is not going to be left behind. Android TV, the replacement for Google TV, is rumored to be imminent. The Verge says uh, it will be much simpler than predecessor uh, Google TV, which I liked a lot, but it was a bomb. They have some screenshots from a leaker, and it looks very similar to the Amazon Fire TV. Um, it has, of course, it'll have more front and center Google stuff like Hangouts. It will have YouTube, which Roku does not have. Although the Amazon box does. It's this is the real problem. The Amazon box I can't believe you can keep all that straight. Uh, you know what? Thanks to Veronica Belmont. She made <laughs> she made a spreadsheet which she no longer maintains, but uh, has been maintained by the community 
uh, of set-top boxes. If you go, I'm going to do it first before I give the URL. But it has every set-top box, and people have maintained this over the years. It's bit.ly slash set-top is the short URL. Oh. And this is what everybody needs because, yeah. <laughs> and they've already added Amazon Fire. It has every, this is, cr you have to be the rain man to know what <laughs> does what. You know, who has HBO Go? Who has YouTube? They all have Netflix. That's one thing you can be sure of. It's just crazy, but some of them do Netflix better than others. The Apple TV, for instance, is a winner with Netflix because Apple runs its own CDN, and so the data is better. On it's just crazy. Uh, thank you, Veronica Balmont. <laughs> Any, anyway, this does not have HBO Go, but it does have YouTube. But the Google TV will have YouTube, but won't have. I don't know. Uh, you, you, <laughs> that's the problem. Is there's no one device you can buy, and how many? I don't know what it's like in France, Patrick, but every single device I have in the United States plays Netflix. Every single one. My TV does. My Xbox One does. By the way, the Xbox One I can also talk to and wave at. In fact, I don't know when I wave if it's the TV or the Xbox One that's listening. <laughs> Sometimes I get two hands of different... Yeah, well, in France, we don't have Netflix. Yeah, uh, so you don't have to worry about soon, that. Hopefully soon, but uh, not yet. Yeah. Um, so that's not that's not a problem. What I do, I'll tell you my biggest takeaway from the Amazon Fire TV is that this hardware is now fairly commoditized. That it because Android is free and open. Of course, this is not the Android with Google services. This is uh, just the open source Android, which Amazon has customized. Because the chips from Qualcomm are widely available and it's easy and it's well understood how we integrate them. Uh, all of this stuff now can be made in a in a very high quality. Package at a very low cost, 99 bucks, easily. It's a commodity product. And uh, it just, it strikes me that um, uh, this is just the beginning. Because <laughs> anybody could, I, people come to visit us all the time uh, with Android streaming sticks. Oh, yes, I have a new Android. I have a new, and I have a new Android streaming stick. There's a million of them. It's kind of a consolidation of the of the market, isn't it? There's been a lot of uh, slightly more niche products for a while, but now the big all of the big boys want the the TV. We're we're sort of stabilized in the uh, mobile uh, uh, landscape, and now all of the big boys are are sort of seriously taking another look at the TV, and even Apple, who's probably not going to be making an actual TV. They're getting, they're graduating the Apple TV, it seems. It's not, right. it's a hobby, but <laughs> a hobby, they they look like they're taking pretty seriously. So it wouldn't surprise me if some of the smaller uh, players in that market start going away slowly over the next uh, couple of years. I think one of the things that's going to happen is at some point, and I know Apple's negotiating hard, and I'm sure it will be fruitless with Comcast, at some point, one of these is going to stream live TV. One or all. Peter uh, from Recode said uh, it was his opinion that the, the content companies wouldn't give it to any one player. They're afraid of what of what happened with Apple, that, of, that Apple would just dominate it. So uh, he says they're all going to get it at once. So you guys don't have IPTV at all uh, in the U.S.? You mean like broadcast? Because no. Well, because yeah, in France, the 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 triple play um, system, I guess, or, or trend started here with a, an ISP that was very innovative, uh, innovative, and still is actually uh, called Free. And we actually have TV live streaming. No, no, it's not even. Well, yeah, I guess it is streaming. It's live TV going through IP services. And the thing is, everyone, all of the ISPs do it now. So you, you pay for your internet connection and you have uh, obviously internet, phone, uh, TV, and sometimes you even have a package with uh, mobile. Uh, but the point is the TV s services also go through the IP. Now they're relayed from on a special, you know, part of the bandwidth and, and they have uh, special servers at each ISP so that you have consistently good quality but that's something we've had uh, for years and i'm a little bit surprised it hasn't happened um oh i'm in not other countries it's a, and the reason is because you have government-run television and we have comcast 
Oh, it's not government. <laughs> well, There's a it's big not, difference. We have, hey, I want we we're going to table stations. this conversation. I do want to get back to this. We will. Kevin Rose has joined us, and I want to bring him into the conversation. Uh, Kevin, thank you. We'll just keep you for a few minutes. I know uh, you got things to do. It's, first of all, it's great to see you again, buddy. Good to see you as well. Thanks for having me. I was so pissed off when I saw your Instagram post this morning. <laughs> uh, I couldn't believe it. This is not an April Fool's joke, right? It is not a joke. Uh, unfortunately, I wish it was. Uh, so everybody probably knows there have been these protests in San Francisco. People, there, uh, This week a, vo a protester vomited on the Google or the Yahoo bus on it. <laughs> not, not, not a rider, a protester. There have been all sorts of stuff. Uh, the feeling is, I guess, that uh, the, the cost of living in San Francisco has just gone through the roof, particularly the cost of housing, because of rich yuppies from the Silicon Valley moving in, taking their fancy leather-clad Wi-Fi-enabled buses back and forth, and it's making it hard uh, for San Franciscans to live. I got to point out the real reason for that is because San Francisco is uh, landlocked. It's a, 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 actually waterlocked, and it's a, 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 a small re region, and the rules the city has created on creating new housing are so prohibitive that just nobody's building housing. And that's what puts pressure on prices. Nevertheless, there have been these protests. And I'm sad to say, Kevin specifically is now being targeted. So on your, can I show this? You put it up yeah, on. Yeah, go for it. Share whatever you like. TechCrunch had an article about it, but I saw it on first on Instagram. Parasite. Happy face. Already I'm starting to think this guy's nuts, whoever put this What's up. What's with the happy face? <laughs> this was a, how big is this banner? Uh, that's just a handout. So that was just a little leaflet that they were handing out to. But to there was also a big banner, right? Yeah, they brought like a ten foot banner that it took a few of them to hold it in up. front of your house. Yeah, in front of the house, and they were chanting like Kevin Rose is a douche, Kevin Rose parasite. Oh my like, God, Kevin! Stuff. This makes me was so sad. Was that a lot of people, or was it just? Oh, there two, it is. Yeah, How about doing. that one? I'm a photo. snip, snip your balls. What is yeah, wrong I mean, with these people? Oh my God! Anyway, let me read this. And I want to know what your take is on this. And and uh, I'm just, I'm so saddened. Greetings, your neighbor, and then it gives your address. So they're pu publishing your address here. A man yeah, named they're... Kevin Rose is a parasite. Perhaps not of you, but of us. This is why we are here, to reveal him for what he is. As a partner venture capitalist at Google Ventures, Kevin, <laughs> you bad man, you, directs the flow of capital from Google into the tech startup bubble that is destroying San Francisco. The startups that he funds bring the swarms of young entrepreneurs that have ravaged. My God, you think they're like, what are they, eating the trees that have ravaged the landscapes of San Francisco and Oakland? Like locusts. With each... <laughs> There's no more corn in San Francisco, and I ask you why! <laughs> With each new tech corporation comes a wave of fresh techies who on average earn four times more than a normal service worker. We are the ones who serve them coffee, deliver them food, watch, I'll skip, skip the next one, watch their kids and mop their floors. Nearly all of them are just like Kevin Rose. I mean, you got to say at least what, I mean, don't say what it was, but that one that they, you're skipping is a, is a doozy. We are the. Right, I'm going to read it out loud. You could bleep me later for if for if you've got kids watching, cover their ears. We are the ones who serve them coffee, deliver them food, suck their cock. Really? I I never got that perk. I'm that, wondering. That's something that's offered as a standard perk to startups. I can just tell you that right now. Is that the end of it? You tweeted there was more, but I don't. They, did they really com complain oh, they, about they, Dignation? They, they complained about Dignation, and they they. They were upset about um, a joke that I made many years ago. Wait a minute, that that's real? I thought you were being silly no, on they're Twitter. Being, they're being dead serious. They were, they were just going through the internet and trying to find any like dirt that they could possibly they find. They mentioned the Dignation? Internet. Yeah, they. I don't have the flyer here with me, but it said <laughs> that it was like an awful show that ran for six years is what I think what they said. Oh, my God. <laughs> an awful show that ran for six years. <sighs> wow. What? So... This must make you sick in your stomach. I mean, is this this is scary stuff? Yeah, I mean, it's certainly. I wasn't home at the time, actually. So they they rang our doorbell, and Daria just went downstairs, thinking it was like someone delivering something. Oh no! And she opened the door, and they handed her a flyer, and she's like, "What is this?" And then they start chanting and yelling, and she just kind of like closes the door and locks it. 
um, oh, and then calls no. me up. And I was down the street helping some buddies build a, a skate ramp, actually. <laughs> and uh, you I, see, ravaging San Francisco. <laughs> It was a skate ramp for a nonprofit too, actually, which was like <laughs> kind of screwed up. But, I knew you were um, raw, bad man. <laughs> Jeez. So uh, I yeah, I came home and I and I, you know, walked out and they they recognized me and they walked up to me, and they were like, uh, "Hi, Chester. Chester just got home." Uh, they they basically uh, you know walked up to me and they were just like, started throwing you know first it was like a lot of insults and then it was just like, "How can you live with yourself?" and <laughs> what you're doing all this, this bad for our city. And, you know, you and they're I saw crazy they were, they were recording or is... the entire thing on an Android phone. I'm like, do you guys realize you're on an Android phone? Like that's, you should probably have an iPhone or something. That's Google stuff. <laughs> and I asked them where they were going to post it, and they said YouTube. And I'm like, do you not see the irony in all this? Like, <laughs> I'm serious. They did. They told me they're going to post it. YouTube. Well, YouTube, because like, you it's free it bandwidth, man. And, uh, the, the thing is, I, the, the thing that really gets to, gets me at the core is, like, I understand their frustrations. Uh, you know, I, I, No, you I, tweeted, I agree with them. We need to solve rising rents, keep the San Francisco culture, and you crack down on landlords evicting people. You don't this way, though. Like, you don't throw up on people's buses. Like, there's a conversation to be had here, but it's not by throwing rocks through windows, you know, th throwing up on people's buses. I, I think that, uh, I mean, Leo, you know how it is. When I was working for you at Tech TV, when I first got hired out uh, in the Bay Area in the early 2000s, you know, I was—I remember my starting salary was twenty-eight thousand a year. Yeah, you—you um, you have a worked. Assistant. You have earned everything you you every penny you've got. You've well, worked your way up. You it was have hard to hum, live. You have humble. San Francisco. Yeah, you know what it's like to live in San Francisco. For we paid you that little. Yeah, uh, and then I was pissed <laughs> off because Dan Heward, I found out, was making 30000 a year. So I went to Paul and I said, you give me a $2,000 raise or I'm quitting. I'm so sorry. And then he, and then they were paying me, you that little. That's I, horrible. I, I, just, I just needed a job. You know? Tech so TV like, is ruining San Francisco. That's awful. So, no, but that's the point is that, look, you were building a skate ramp for a nonprofit. This is, this is not the Kevin Rose I know, obviously. And it doesn't even make sense. It's like, are they... There are certainly issues, but their issues are don't go back to Google or even startups or any of this. And I know you're sympathetic to that. I wonder if these people are crazy. Are they genuine? You think? You know, it's. Um, I think that their their complaints are certainly uh, founded in reality. Like there are some really shady things going on here. Like landlords are, are kicking out. Um, long-time tenants and then instantly jacking up the prices because they know they can get it with some of the tech folks that are making more. And so people are getting displaced. So that's frustrating. You know, it's frustrating to a lot of people. Um, so there are complaints to be had here um, and, and a conversation to be had. But I certainly don't think that um, Google and some of these other tech companies are, are necessarily at fault. I mean, yes, they are bringing in more tech workers, but I think that there's a lot of, of good being done here as well. I mean, it, I certainly know what we do at Google Ventures and funding tech companies and, uh, you know, we Foundation Medicine is one of our big companies that is working on cures for cancer and, like, we're, we're trying to, like, it's not just funding companies for the sake of funding companies. Like, there's a kind of a bigger, bigger mission here. Absolutely. Uh, and, I mean, if you look at, I mean, I, if you wanted to protest against the financial industry, I'll join you. If you, there's lots of places you can complain. Google doesn't seem to be one of them or any of the startup industry. Have you gotten the sense, Kevin, that uh, has, have you talking about this? Has that made any, anyone else say that this also happened to them? Or is this just a, a random Kevin Rose targeting? I know it has happened to a few other people. Um, I don't know who those people are, but I, I saw something about, someone left a comment on my Instagram post saying that it happened to them. Mm. And then I know that it, there, there was at least one other Googler that it happened to. Um, that right, was, there was uh, the self-driving car guy. Um, oh, okay. Yes. Up, I think. Right. Right. Uh, you, is it not what this, are you going to hire a security guard? Are you concerned? Uh, at this point, we have Google security on it. So, you know, I've reached out to them. They have a pretty decent um, department there that uh, handles this type of stuff. Um, but, you know, it's there's no real concern here. My house is pretty locked down. I have cameras all over the place. And, you know, I've kind of created a little bunker here. So I'm not too worried about that. But it is um, obviously... You know, it gets your like stomach grumbling and yeah. your little tense and you're shaking. Scary. And of course, my wife Daria was was spooked out by the whole thing. And it's um, you just don't know how how far it's going to go. You know, right now, yes, I was able to sit down outside and ha actually have a conversation with these folks, and it wasn't aggressive. Like they weren't here to throw rocks. They 
they were upset and, and visibly upset, but they, they weren't like, I didn't feel at all like they were going to start a fight. Um, and then the cops showed up and then they just they just kind of ran. They took off. I, I got to tell you, though, to be careful about mobs because individual humans are fine. But when they get in a group, sometimes they will do sure. things that, uh, you know, they wouldn't do as individuals. Uh, so don't don't underestimate the risks to you when you go out and talk to them. I, I honor you. I would have done the same thing. But um, that's that can be dangerous because mobs will do stupid things. That are, that's you know, true. Uh, have you and Daria maybe even thought about moving out of San Francisco? No, uh, you know we love it here. This is this is our home, and it's been our home for for quite some time. You know, I've been here since 2000 myself, so it's longer than any other place I've lived, um, and, and I consider it to be home. So, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of really positive, awesome things that are happening here in in a bunch of different sectors. So I think that um, you know this is certainly for me, it's just something to pay attention to, and it's something that. I think that, you know, I, I saw Ron Conway at the Crunchies give a long talk about how the tech community in general has to come together to solve some of these problems. And I certainly believe that's the case. So, um, you know, I would like to take part in that conversation and sit down with some folks that are willing to have a conversation um, that isn't aggressive. And, and hopefully that, that will happen. But, um, yeah, this is home. So we, we don't plan on moving anytime soon. Kevin, I it just I saw that and I was so saddened. Um... And I agree, there there are real problems that need to be addressed, but that's but you're not the cause of them. Well, I sent them to your house. I, okay, I, thank you. I, you know, no, I am. The, it's my tag. fault. I am the one percent, and you can come <laughs> after me anytime. Uh, if Petaluma has been ravaged, I say ravaged <laughs> by people like me. Uh, thank you, Kevin. I appreciate you taking some time to talk about this, and uh, I really ad actually admire your point of view on it. I think you're, uh, you're. Yeah, it seems like Kevin. They chose the right person to target in a way because you're not. To, I mean, I, I wish no uh, uh -oh. ill upon you at all, but you're not too freaked by it. Maybe it's like a good channel for a conversation to start. I don't know. Maybe that's too uh, look the upside of it. But uh, hey, if any, if anybody would be message out right. instantly with Instagram, I mean, I was I've been on this weekend and I saw it just like went out immediately. People right. started talking about it. Yeah. 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 I, they were a little shocked when I, I kind of tried to like, you know, bring it back to. We started talking about jobs and how you get started. I, I kind of, you know, let them know that I didn't just wasn't born a VC, um, and I actually was a college dropout, and that was I think it was pretty shocking to them. And so, you know, you just kind of try and 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 have a real conversation around this rather than yelling. And so it started to happen at the end, but then the police showed up. But um, we'll we'll see where this goes. By the way, we got that picture at Kevin Rose is a terrible person. WordPress. Com in case you want to. Uh... Sweet. Isn't that nice? Oh, that is nice. You know, Kevin was one of the great people in the world and really cares deeply, and it's just so wrong. Kevin Rose Leach. That's so wrong, folks. You know, that's sad. Here's a guy who's actually done a lot to create uh, <laughs> employment. I appreciate that. Thanks, Kevin. I'm sorry that happened. Uh, love to you both. Thank you so much. Yep. Thanks for having me on. Take care. Cheers, guys. Thanks. <laughs> Makes me so sad. All right, let's uh, take a break. When we come back, more. Liz Gaines is here from uh, Recode.net. Dot net. Uh, Patrick Beja from France. <laughs> I need a better. I need something better. Uh, <laughs> you got a better one, Patrick? Something I could say. You know, PatrickBeja.com. I guess. You know. Yeah, PatrickBeja.com yeah, works. Or go. not Patrick. Yeah. Yeah. Not works Patrick. too. All right. Our from show. France. It's it's fine. You know, I I'm like it. From France on, from on all, France. all the shows I'm I'm on. So You're from works. France. Yes. I just like that. And I do want to talk a little bit about how uh television is and content is treated differently in France and Europe at, than from here. Because that is we we got into that topic, it's a good topic. But first let's talk about Audible. Dot com. When you're riding in the Google bus and you got the Wi Fi, the leather seats, there's nothing better than also having your headphones on. Maybe those Maybe those Bose Quiet Comfort 3 headphones on, you know, the titanium model, and listen to an audio book. I'm sorry. I should just stop. I should just stop. Oh, look at this. Mary Roach's Gulp. This is a great book. In fact, any of Mary Roach's books are great at Audible. I'm going to get you two books free. So maybe you could do uh, Gulp, which is the story of the elementary canal, with Bonk, the story of sex, or Stiff, the story of cadavers. Um, she also wrote a great book called Packing for Mars, The Curious Science of Life in the Void. Spook, Science Tackles the Afterlife. 
and My Planet, Finding Humor in the Oddest Places. She is actually one of my favorite authors. I think this is when I first became aware of her a couple of years ago. Um, it's The Study of Death, uh, Stiff, The Curious Life of Human Cadavers. And then you can go on to gulp and bonk. <laughs> you really, really have some fun. Audible is a great place to go to get audio books of all kinds. Those are nonfiction books, but they've, of course, got fiction books, too, like Danielle Suarez's latest. I think I just made Daniel a girl. Danielle Suarez's greatest, In Flux. Wow, is that a, that is a page turner. What is it? We need a word for page turners on Audible. That is a... Unpausables. Unpausable. Oh, I like that. That's an unpausable. That's a drive around the block three times because I don't want to stop listening even though I'm home, in your car, at work, on the treadmill, at your desk, Audible is a great companion. 150,000 titles in every category. Oh, this is cool. Um, Mike Elgin was talking about this uh, last week. The Biz Stone book, Things a Little Bird Told Me, Confessions of a Creative Mind, is on Audible as well. Audible has the best readers, by the way, and that's a, that's a big part of this, is you're listening... Oh, I really want this one. I think I'm going to put this on my uh, on my Audible next listen. Flash Boys, A Wall Street Revolt. This is the new Michael Lewis book about high-frequency trading. It is the talk of the town. That's one of the things about Audible that's great is uh, you're not getting last year's books. I mean, you could. In fact, they've got classics and great literature, too. But all of the new books now come out on audible.com, day and date of their release in the bookstore. And that's awesome. You're never left behind. Uh, anything by Michael Lewis is a must-read. He is just one of my favorite uh, authors. Uh, but his latest Flash Boys about high-frequency trading is really hot stuff. Audible.com slash twit2. That's audible.com twit and the number two. will get you two books. You're going to sign up for the Platinum account. That's the two-book-a-month subscription. It also includes your daily digest uh, of either the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal. That's nice. Uh, you're going to get some great listening. You can cancel any time in the first 30 days, pay nothing. Those books are yours to keep, but I think you're going to want to stick around. This is fabulous. I listen all the time. Chad and I had a great conversation last night, or I guess it was Friday night. Yeah. I didn't realize you were such an Audible fan. I am a huge Audible fan. Yeah. I've been listening to audiobooks in one form or another since for, for years, and when I found Audible, it's the best way to listen great to audiobooks. Great courses. You said you, yeah. this was like a college education yeah. in, a, in your iPod. So... Um, Audible.com slash twit2. Try it today. I know you're going to like it. I'm going to just quickly, before we move on, buy Flash Boys. I have two credits. I love it when I get two credits. It's so nice. Audible. Oh, there's some other books I want to listen to, too. Oh, and that new Haunted Empire. Hey, what did you think of that, uh, Liz Gaines? I'm sure you... Did you know, Yukari? I haven't read it, actually. Yeah. A lot of, you know... Uh, it's interesting to see Apple come out so strongly against it. I mean, I kind of, my, this is obviously a uninformed take given I haven't read the book, but I think it might be a little bit too early to write a book about Tim Cook's reign at Apple. <laughs> it is a little early. Uh, the premise is that it's haunted by Steve Jobs' ghost, of course. Um, and uh, it, it does, I think, imply that Apple is not going to do too well in the future. We don't know that yet. Um but the criticism I've heard from some, and I haven't read it either, in fact, I'm going to put that in my card as well, um, is that uh, it's um, a lot of anecdotal stuff, some of it not accurate, some of it people deny, say it's not true. Well, Apple actually put out, Tim Cook put out a statement against the book, which is pretty, yeah. un, I mean, I guess it's not that unusual, no. but uh, for, Steve, unusual for Apple. Steve, I remember Steve, I don't remember which book it was. Uh, but Steve Jobs, when one of the, the books about him came out, um, pulled it from, uh, what did he do? He pulled it from all the Apple stores. He made sure, oh, he pulled the publisher from all the Apple stores. So they punished the publisher. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, so, well. So I think this is not Maybe new. they should be less buttoned up and <laughs> private and tell their own story if they're this, so mad about this is, other people. This yeah. is not a new... Uh, uh, phenomenon. Yeah, maybe they just, you know, I think, you know. Uh, yeah. Um. So, uh, let's see. Should we, we can move on a little bit. There was a big event in uh, San Francisco this week called Build. 
Microsoft's developer conference, and they announced a ton of stuff. Um, let me go through a few of the big stories. Uh, one is, of course, uh, that Windows is now free on devices with screens under 9 inches, which would never have happened under Steve Ballmer or Bill Gates. Uh, uh, that was the crown. They're giving away the crown jewels. This is a response, obviously, to Android uh, and to, to get Windows on mobile devices. And maybe to get Windows 8.1 out there. So does that mean, because they're saying phone and tablets, does that mean that Windows Phone is free no. for everyone? No, no, no. So phones, <laughs> let's not go crazy here. Phone, but they are saying phones and tablets, right? They so, are. Well, they're saying anything with a nine inch or less screen or under nine inch screen. That means, though, there are a lot of ta eight inch tablets like the Dell venue mm. that are windows, full windows on an eight inch tablet. Lenovo sure. has one. I think Toshiba might have one. I know Dell has one. So those guys, that that's a big deal for those guys. Um, they also cut the license costs in general. Uh, significantly. So this is, I think you could make the case that Satya, this is a Satya Nadella move. Some of the things like Windows Phone 8.1, obviously in the works for a long time. Uh, update, the new update for Windows 8.1 in the works yeah. for a long time. But he's, I think Satya is really taking Microsoft in a new direction. Well, they want to get everyone involved in their ecosystem and obviously Nadella is very much uh, cloud and uh, services oriented so and uh, I mean Windows on these types of devices has not been doing too well no uh, so they they do need to do something to get it a little bit more um, popular and obviously that is one of the things that they could be doing and hopefully by emphasizing the services aspect of Microsoft, then maybe they can pull people in with cheaper devices that get uh, the, the juice going on the services. But the sad thing is, I'm not even sure that that will be enough. Too late? Um, too late, you think? Um, I don't know if it's too late. I, I It's not uh, the... the, the I love my Windows 8 PC. I, I really love it. I've been one of the few people who actually enjoys Windows 8. But I, I think people just don't want it. Uh, they, they. I think don't. you're right. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to talk about an off-the-record conversation I had with two very well-known Windows watchers who may or may not do a podcast on this network. <laughs> okay. And uh, what we were talking about, and I don't know why they haven't said this more forcefully on that podcast, but uh, what we're talking about is uh, the idea that apparent what seems to have happened is for reasons no one fully understands, Microsoft said to Steven Sanofsky, go make Windows 8 and we are going to let you rethink the whole thing and we're not going to weigh in. Anything goes, Steven. And Sanofsky went off and created this kind of nightmare hybrid of touch and desktop. And not one person at Microsoft, not one person on the board said boo to Sanofsky. Uh, Sanofsky's the right guy to do it. He'd had great success with Office, the ribbon. Uh, he, uh, he was very forceful, apparently, in the way he communicated his ideas. I, I asked them, I said, well, is Sanofsky that persuasive? Does he, is, is it like perceived at Microsoft he's the genius? And they said, no, he's just very forceful. Windows came out. Sanofsky was terminated. Balmer, I think, was forced out as a result. It has been a very, I think it's safe to say, big failure. And Windows is the crown jewel. You do not mess with the crown jewel, Microsoft. And, and the real flaw goes back to management saying, go ahead, do whatever you want. Well, there's a key thing which you said uh, right there. You talked about the ribbon. And how, you know, Sinovsky was the one who made it. And the thing is, a lot of people still hate the ribbon. Um, oh, yeah. And it, it is, it is a, a incredibly better than what was before. You know, that forest of menus and everything. But it still has a horrible image. So I'm wondering if, you know, they were getting some feedback or maybe themselves were thinking, that thing that he's doing with Windows where 
not sure that, you know, we, we don't like it, but we also didn't like the ribbon. And it turns out the ribbon is actually better for productivity. And we, we need to move in a different direction. So it's easy in hindsight to say, well, you know, obviously Windows would never have worked the way it is now, but they had to worry about the touch interfaces and the tablets and all of that. And they needed to do something radical. So they basically something that a lot of people said at the time as well, if Windows had, had not done this, we would all be sitting here saying, criticizing them for not moving and thinking differently and doing things in a, in a, a, a different enough direction. Uh, so I can understand definitely why they would leave him free reign to to change everything and not uh, hold it back in when when they realize maybe it's not you know maybe they as individuals don't like it as much. It seems clear that it's why Balmer uh, had to step down, uh, and I think Satya Nadella was chosen. They wanted somebody inside Microsoft. Maybe they wanted some people outside Microsoft who said no. But um, I think he was a very good choice because the future of Microsoft clearly is in the cloud, yes? The future of computing is in the cloud. Yeah, the future of everyone. Yeah. Mobile. Yeah, I think you're getting into trouble when you're talking about giving away the crown jewels because that's, you know, the attitude that will not uh, allow you to focus on whatever's coming next. Right. Right. Um, so it is a new Microsoft. I think there's I think there's no question in my mind it's a new Microsoft giving away Windows. Um, when, uh, I have to say Windows Phone 8.1 is the first. I've always thought highly of Windows Phone. I think they did reinvent that. In fact, that's one of the reasons I think they let Sanofsky do what he did is because they said, well, this interface is working really well on phone. Let's try bringing that to the desktop. Um, mm. it, it's good. It's just late to the party and doesn't have the apps. But Windows Phone 8.1 fills a lot of holes, especially with... Cortana, which is uh, the voice-activated uh, personal assistant for uh, Windows 8.1. Um, Microsoft has it in a unique position. Apple has Siri, of course. Google has its own voice. Microsoft's a little... Uh, Apple's a little hobbled by the fact that it's made the decision, and I think a lot of people embrace this decision, to protect its users' privacy. The, unlike Google, they are not willing to aggregate all the data from all the different things they know about you and make Siri better because of it. Siri, a lot of people, I, f I felt like Siri was better before Apple got it. It did more. Um, Apple, you know, can't do a Google. That's definitely, that's true. I mean, Siri was different before Apple bought it. Um, it, it tied into the APIs of a whole bunch of different services. So it let you do all sorts of things like, you know, plan your whole date for the evening without ever leaving the app. But, um, but I, I think that, if you look at the little incremental updates, um, I'm an iPhone user, and if you look, it, it's starting to get much more like a personal assistant. And you see that in the voice thing, but it's not just about voice in Siri. It's also about, um, you know, if you if you pull down your screen, it'll tell you things like how many meetings you have that day, what the weather's like. Um, and it's, it's becoming more and more kind of useful in doing that kind of like anticipating your needs rather than waiting for you to search for things, um, which is where Google is going. And it's, it's a better experience in a lot of ways. If, as long as you're willing to let your phone, um, you know, know where you're located and look at your calendar and stuff like that. But you've already done that if you're using an iPhone. Yeah. What, what Apple doesn't have that Google has is your search, your email, no, that's your true. YouTube choices, there, and, 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 Google, and Microsoft is saying what they have is, you know, bang. your Xbox and... They have know, a lot. They're, yeah, they're so better there's, positioned there's than Apple, I think. Tie into. See, Google, uh, Google, I'm looking at my Google Now cards. It says how long it's going to take me to get home. Uh, I mean, I guess Apple could do that. The, the, the Giants game, because it knows, because I searched for Giants, it knows I follow the Giants. Um, for some reason, it thinks I like, uh, I like Moon Alice. That's a mistake. Um, it knows what stocks I follow. Oh, look, it knows that I ordered a Fire TV. I expect to see more postings uh, there because that came in yeah, but you know through what? Gmail. So Apple is not willing to do that, a and rightly so. I think they provide an alternative to people. They're not far off, though. I mean, you know, not to get in the let's look at our phones harder war, but I'm just looking down and, you know, at, at Apple, they tell me what the weather is. I, okay. I am currently at home, so it's not going to tell me how long it will take to get right. home. Uh, would Apple do that? Would Siri, would Siri do that? Uh, tell tell you, you, like, uh, you got to yes. get going, you got to be home? Yeah, in fact, it says tomorrow, your calendar looks clear in the morning, but you have three events scheduled, oh, the first one starting at 12 p.m. Okay. 
But that's your calendar, you get, and you explicitly gave it permission. I think Apple's going to be hobbled because I really think that they don't want to go so far. Google's willing to go to any length. In fact, they just updated their uh, uh, the way that uh, logging in to your Gmail works on your iPhone. I'm sure you knew this, Liz, but now, since you use the iPhone, but now because you're logged into Gmail, you're logged into all the other Google services. You know, mm -hmm. you, you don't yeah, have to... Yeah, no, Google's much making itself much more of a package deal than it was before. Yeah, and then, of course, they're saying, and we're going to aggregate all of that information. So when you watch a YouTube video, now we associate it with your account, whether you knew it or not. Uh, it doesn't yeah, bother me, but, but it know, bothers some people. Who is, yeah, yeah. I mean, I... I understand that I'm doing a trade-off of privacy for right. convenience everywhere in my online life. And um, I also have an Android phone. And by comparison, I think that it, there's a lot of things it does a lot better because it's a more cohesive experience. It's not as all these discrete apps um, split out from each other with no knowledge right. of what the other ones are doing. Well, and my point is that Microsoft is better positioned than Apple to do this because they have Bing. Um, they have enough. Yeah, if you really live in that world, if you're really yeah. a Microsoft, you have person. to be a Windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, I was impressed. I like Cortana. Cortana is the name of the personal assistant, the voice. She's got a good voice. Uh, in fact, she's got arguably a better voice than either Siri or Google because some of the speech is pre recorded actual voice, some of it's synthesized, some of it's not. It's a little disconcerting when you listen because it's the same voice, but it's one sounds more synthesized. But it's it like doesn't. It, yeah, yeah. It's it's okay, but it doesn't feel like oh, that was the you know virtual assistant I was waiting for. It's 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 good. It's it's nice that Microsoft is is getting in on that uh, on that game as well. But what I felt was really interesting in in all of those conferences was, I guess what Microsoft does best is ubiquity. And, you know, there's a, they made a, a lot uh, of noise about the fact that you'll be able to develop apps that will be, you know, that they're unifying the binary. That's basically. a huge thing, too. That's, yeah, exactly. That, that's, you know, Windows runtime will run this, Windows, will be the same across all yeah. its platforms. Including Xbox and, you know, they're, they're going really, really wide with this. Yeah. Um, and they're even, you know, they're announcing uh, uh, availability in the car. They, there was even a leak about Windows for devices where they were talking about, I can't remember, coffee mugs and, and you know, uh, just wearables in general. Um, so it seems like they're, I think that Nadella is going to get the credit for a lot of the, the changes that are going to be happening this year. But it feels like a lot of those have been oh, yeah. in the works for the past couple of years when, you know, Windows 8 first came out. Yeah, he's only um, been on the job a few months. He obviously didn't have anything yeah. to do with Cortana. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Nevertheless, I, I do think that he is more willing to say, well, you know, at, on the iPad announcement, he said, let me, give me my iPad. Never, you would never hear Stuart Bomber say that. He stopped on an iPhone, mock stomped on an iPhone at an all-hands meeting a couple of years ago. Yeah, the release finally of the uh, of Office on iPad, <laughs> yeah. that probably would have still taken yeah. a little bit more time. Nadella is putting his stamp on it, and I think it goes along with things like getting Windows Phone 8.1 uh, up to parity with iPhone and uh, Android phone. You can ask, one of the things you can tell uh, that, see, this is where Microsoft has a little bit of an advantage. They own Skype, so you can say, uh, call my mom on Skype, and it will not only open Skype, but call you know, it has your Skype contacts. It'll call her. Um, they they did a deal with Facebook. You're going to get similar kind of functionality with Facebook. Uh, Cortana scans the email on your phone. See, Microsoft's been really careful. You know, they, they're going to have to stop doing the Scroogle campaign because they the Gmail man. They read you. <laughs> it's Cor over. It's over. Cortana it's, scans yeah. the email on your phone, recognizes items like flight schedules and other reservations. So she will remind you, hey, time to leave for the airport. I know you're going. But it's out not to sell you. It's not to show you ads. So. Oh, so that's okay. Well, you know that's their argument with right. with Scroogle, and it's also I'm sure it, you know the people who do the Scroogle campaigns don't talk to the people who develop Cortana. Yeah. But uh, well, they may because Mark Penn, the guy who did the Scroogle campaign, <laughs> has been promoted to Microsoft, and right. is now in charge. What is Penn in charge of? Digital strat. All he's like in charge of strategy, I think, at Microsoft. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, he's executive vice president, advertising and strategy. And you were saying earlier, you know, is it too late for, for Microsoft? I don't want to say it's never too late, but we, we have a tendency in the, you know, consumer 
space as consumer space watchers mostly. I mean, we do a lot of enterprise. It's very important. But we have a tendency to underestimate a little bit uh, how important and how big Microsoft still is uh, in, in a lot of uh, places. And I, I really don't think it's too late for Microsoft ever you know that they're, they're they're so uh ubiquitous and 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 have such a, a, a big presence in some of the spaces that that matter uh that it would take a lot a lo much longer period of screwing up for them to be out of the game now they just need but to but they're spending so much point. time on idiotic things right like why are you spending <laughs> your time on scroogled why are you spending your time on not releasing uh, office for iPad. That's you had the it right old I mean, Microsoft. Were... I think we're seeing a, a kinder, gentler Microsoft. Yes, but you can't you can't get ahead of your competition if you're just internally messing things up like right. that, where you're, you're, you're putting your focus on things that are totally not uh, improving what people actually you like and use and want to um, be loyal to your company. And for. I'm thinking Satya Nadella came in and said exactly that. Probably, I'm but hoping. again, let me take you the let, let me take the other the other side of the argument. You're you're just coming out with a tablet computer with a brand new system with a brand <laughs> new OS. It does look very strange if the next day you come out with i you know with an Office on the iPad and you don't have the touch version of Office on your brand new system. So I'm not saying it's the right choice, but I definitely understand why they wouldn't want to come out with Office on the iPad immediately. Did, yeah, and I don't want to no? say that other companies don't do stupid stuff, right? Like, I mean, Apple is so <laughs> pissed off about this whole Samsung patent thing that they're allowing, like, their internal emails and strategy from not that long ago, just from, like, a year ago, to be exposed in court. Like, I mean, companies do really, really <laughs> bizarre things. Well, I'm I'm very curious. I know, did they, how much did they talk about Surface at Build? I didn't. I didn't see any mention at all. Maybe I just missed it. There wasn't a lot of it, I think, except for, <laughs> the, for the for the runtime, the universal uh, which is good runtime, yeah. but which is which is great. But that's yeah. for and everybody. You know, the I fact mean, that the fact that you can have uh, uh, well, I guess that's not Surface, but the yeah. Windows Store applications on the desktop. There, there's a lot of stuff happening in there, but um, but yeah, I, I think that what he's been saying, what Nadella said when he announced the uh, iPad version of Office was that there was going to be a number of announcements uh, in the next few weeks. And Build is part of that, of course. But I wouldn't be surprised if we heard a little bit more uh, specifically about tablets uh, in the in the near future. I wonder. I want to maybe read the tea leaves and say maybe they're backing down on the hardware. Mm. Who knows? I'd be surprised. Yeah. It would be well. Because that's. If, if, I asked. If, I asked this uh, mythical uh, couple who don't or may or may not host a podcast on our network. <laughs> why doesn't Microsoft just say we blew it? Eight was a mistake. Let we're go the we're well, going. We're going they back. To, they, they don't need to. They're making eight into seven now. Well, They're that's what they back the that's actual, what Paul and the Mary Joe said. Uh, they ca yeah. they can't because all the developers would go. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> One <laughs> no, too many changes. Back. What. What do people need now in in eight in order to accept it? The uh, start menu, right. and they're bringing that back. Bring you can back. boot to desktop. Yeah. You have the start menu. You can yep. run uh, window. You can control everything with the mouse. You know, including Windows uh, Metro style uh, uh, applications. Uh, you can put them in a in a window on the desktop. Eight, as Sinovsky conceived it, is is pretty much gone. I think it's safe to say. Liz, you cover uh, mobile uh, on Recode, and uh, of course you have the mobile conference. What do you hear about Nokia and Microsoft? They said, what, next month, maybe? Yeah, yeah, it's coming soon, I think. Yeah. Do you, that's going to change. I think I think Patrick's right. That's, that is going to change things. Maybe we are waiting for the other shoe to drop here. We'll give it some time. Okay. I mean, I, 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 I look forward to seeing <clears throat> how those things can come together in a useful right. way. I think there are still, you know, smart people uh, who are, have a lot of experience selling phones who are trying very hard to make something interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, even, um, you know, in the course of defending Microsoft, we're talking about how Cortana is just catching up, right? So there's there's more to be done. And to answer your question about should they be giving up on uh, on Surface, I think the big problem is if they're not going to be do building one, then probably no no one is. So they they really need to keep doing it. 
They have to. Yeah, I guess they do. <laughs> I think Nokia actually has some great uh, products, and I and uh, the camera is phenomenal. And uh, now that I've seen a one, I'm thinking maybe, maybe we don't. Uh, I was I was saying for a long time they should just abandon Windows Phone, go Android, because I want to see that hardware with Android on it. Maybe we don't need to. Maybe Windows Phone is actually getting better and better, and that cameras are good, and maybe they've got a a strong. Uh, I. Boy, I've, from the point of view of users, having three major choices would be great. Apple, Android, and uh, and Windows, Microsoft. I'd like to see that. Hey, guess who's going to join us in a little bit? Jeff Jarvis is just sitting around not doing anything on a Sunday afternoon. It was, I kind of tell you, it, it was really hard to get people on the show. And, I, and Chad and I finally figured out why. Game of Thrones. Ah. <laughs> we, I could not figure it out. But Game of Thrones debuts tonight. And it's also the nicest weather that San Francisco has ever it's had. It's almost 80 degrees. Oh, it's a shut up. <laughs> What's it like in Paris? Wait a minute. Wild. April in Paris. you got to tell me it's gorgeous there, right? Oh, in it's Paris actually, it's wonderful, but it's, it's 20, 24 degrees. What? But, well, what Fahrenheit? Celsius. No, scale. Celsius, of course. I'm not using oh. your space units. So it's very nice then. <laughs> 24 is perfect. Yes, it's wonderful. It's wonderful in Paris right now. Hey, Jeff Jarvis, welcome. Hey there, it's nice here too. Let me see. That's, Let's see that. Oh, New York is beautiful oh, too. Oh, but see, go. there's no leaves on the no trees. No leaves on the trees. Yeah. No, no, no. It's barren and sad and, <laughs> and gray. Do, do, and why, what is this? All of a sudden, but, you're, you're joining us in the chat room on Sundays now? and uh, bozos of San Francisco here, and that's the good thing. We don't have the, 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 oh. the, the ersatz commies <laughs> Oh, my God. Did you and see that? I missed it. I, well, I missed you already talked about the story, and I missed it. I was, I was. We had Kevin on. Kevin you Rose was. Kevin on. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I missed it. You're gonna have to go back and watch the uh, watch the on demand because Kevin. You know what? Kevin is much more gracious than I would have been. He is way more. I would. I would have just gone berserk. Yeah. He went out and talked to him. <gasps> Can you believe Martin. that? Brave man. Oh, and I, I just wanted to say about this this story in Paris. The prices uh, have been going up for. 10 years it's it's getting completely crazy and we are trying as hard as we can to get the startups to uh, the startup ecosystem to to take off in paris so and, and you know, no offense uh, take no offense to this but but parisians are known to be even nuttier than san franciscans <laughs> and the san franciscans are out doing them like absolutely. crazy right now absolutely it, to I the guess, barricades used to be the parisian call now it's the yeah. same to the barricades! Now, now let's go barf on a bus. Well, what is this? What is this fun? So, so every Wait, bit of money will just like, leave San Francisco. I, I, it's funny though because I think that there's like this. Uh, it's almost like internet trolling kind of comments kind of come to life. Like I almost don't yeah. believe that. Um, mm -hmm. Look, I I, I uh, am, am from the Bay Area, and um, I understand there's a lot of different nuances here. But to have someone come to your house and say that without like kind of cracking up, it's it's almost. It's hard for me. I have to get wrap my mind around it. It seems like it's the internet comment section, which which Kevin helped to set off on Dig, you know, coming to life and like appearing in front of his house. It is. It's the ultimate trolling. It is. The yeah, trolls yeah, yeah. have come to, to life. Back to the story when you already handled it, but 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 the one thing that I hope to see is I hope to see Liz, the sane San Franciscans, stand up and say, "Okay, folks, enough, enough. We benefit from technology being here." benefit tremendously from this we we you know so some buses come by yes prices go up welcome to capitalism welcome to the market but at some point it's really going to hurt the city it's really going to harm i think the image of the city and i lived in san francisco in the days when it was known as nutty in the days of jonestown and other craziness and it's always been known as somewhat nutty but i think yes. this is harmful to the city yeah i'm interested to see um i I don't, for me personally, the alarm bells are not going off yet, but no one Good. came and protested at my house this morning. Right. Uh, we did get some uh, evict Ed Lee, who's our tech-loving mayor, graffiti on my side door that we had to paint over. But that's been the, the personal impact to me so far. That would drive me nutty. That would drive me I, nuts. I am very sympathetic to people who are uh, getting evicted, who are getting pushed out of their neighborhoods, they've lived there their whole lives, all of that stuff. That's that's sad, and that's not right. But I don't think you can blame Google, Google or Yahoo or anybody for yeah. that. And would uh, you rather do without? Would you rather be Des Moines? Would you rather be Detroit? What scares me more than anything is this just this notion that um, uh, I feel like it's a backlash against uh, 
technology in general. It goes along with the uh, yes. privacy issues and all of that. I, I really fear that there may be a, a Luddite backlash uh, in the making, and that scares me because um, that would not be good. I don't want to. I think you're right, Leo. I think there's two things going on. I think one is a, is a technology backlash, and the other one is an economic bash, backlash, right? The, there is a technology 1% being created. As jobs are eliminated, there's higher profitability, higher uh, productivity, higher, greater wealth being created in Silicon Valley. And that's an issue that has, the Silicon Valley has to figure out how to deal with, yes. Well, I guess income inequality is a ma major issue, and it gets too, yes. goes too far. That's You know that, Patrick. Back in 1789, these things go bad. <laughs> they, they don't end well. I don't think we're quite there yet, but yes, let's keep our eye on, on the situation. When they build a guillotine in Union Square, then I'll know <laughs> trouble's a brewing. <laughs> Meanwhile, Titans let's get... don't go to Union Square. <laughs> they don't go there. <laughs> no, 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 nobody there. Huh? Nobody uh, there. No. Now I would protest there. Go protest Neiman Marcus. That you want to protest something? Protest Neiman Marcus. Our show today brought to you by Jeff. Stick around. Yeah. Sure. Can you give sure, us a minute? Yeah. Lots yeah, to yeah, talk yeah, about. I, I was I was just going to go out for a healthy walk. I'd rather be here. Oh uh, yeah. No. With you. This is so much better than exercise. <laughs> yeah. I, I have a topic for Jeff after the the good. <laughs> Patrick is going to give you a topic to uh -oh. expound upon. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure and privilege to talk to you about GoToMeeting. Our friends at Citrix have created a fabulous way to stay in touch, to meet with, to collaborate with coworkers and clients anywhere they are, anywhere you are. It's so important to build a strong relationship with your, tea, your, uh, key, your team, I should say, uh, meet and collaborate with coworkers and clients on a regular basis to brainstorm, develop quality ideas and solutions. You got to do it in a meeting, but you don't have to all be together. With GoToMeeting, you can get everybody in the same room, in effect. You're on the same page, sharing your screen. You're seeing each other face to face over GoToMeeting with HD faces. It is fabulous. And look at this. This is really cool. If you're using Google Chrome, you can now use GoToMeeting free. Video conference with up to three people, no sign-up, no download. They're always trying new stuff at GoToMeeting. I'm wondering if this is using WebRTC. we gotta, we got to check this out. This is really cool. It's so easy to use GoToMeeting at your business. You can sign up for 30 days free, get the full, full thing, as many people as you want, as often as you want. It is, there's no, it's no surprise this is like the choice in business for meeting. Visit GoToMeeting.com, click the Try It Free button, and use the promo code TWIT, G-O-T-O, Meeting.com, the Try It Free button, right there, promo code T-W-I-T. And, and take advantage of this uh, really great deal if you're using Google Chrome to use GoToMeeting free for up to three people. That is awesome. GoToMeeting.com on mobile, on iPad, on iPhone, uh, desktop, on laptop, on Android, it's all there. All right, Patrick Beja is here, not Patrick on the Twitter, patrickbeja.com. Liz Gaines from, uh, I always ask you, Gans or Gaines? Which do you like? Gaines. Your dad uses rhymes Gaines. With, rhymes with brains. Gaines rhymes with brains. That's the answer <laughs> you gave me last time. Recode.net. And uh, I've mentioned it before, but uh, I go back a ways with the, Liz's dad, Stu Gaines. And That's right. uh, it's nice to work with his daughter. It's so yeah. cool. Yeah, I'm glad you're trying to get him to come watch basketball to meet with me tonight. The the Stanford's women's basketball is in the final four. Oh, how exciting. So maybe I'll see him later. Are you an alumna? No, no, but you know, growing up in Palo Alto, you it's kind of, you come, it's kind of a fun yeah, thing to go out yeah, for. Yeah. But they haven't won, you know, the women haven't won uh the NCAA since I was growing up in Palo Alto. Now's the time. So yeah. Looking for a win. Yeah. Huskies in there. I mean, this is exciting. This is exciting time. I don't follow this stuff at all. I just, you know, no, I, just I you pretend know, I know much. sport ball. As I as I always <laughs> say, Leo, I'm neither a real man nor a real American. <laughs> I don't know sports. Okay, you're not a real man because you're not into sports. But what's the American part? You like sports. you like oh you sports. like freedom fries sports. Okay, <laughs> sports. I don't know sports. I don't know. <laughs> Sweat, so so know. Patrick, you have a challenge. Jeff Jarvis is also here, by the way. Normally host of This Week in Google. We can't keep him away. It's so nice to have you on a Sunday afternoon. Thank you, Jeff, for joining us. He is with the Professor of Journalism at the City University of New York. He is also a really accomplished author. His latest public You are parts. the plugmeister. I like to get the plugs in because you guys You're come good. here for You're free. Good. So 
I got to give you something. <laughs> got to give you something in return. Actually, Stern's the plugmeister. Yes. But he saves it for the last 10 minutes of the show. Yeah. At, and nobody's listening at 10 o'clock. Uh, so I like to stick my plugs in earlier. So you had a, Patrick, you had a... Uh, <laughs> Sorry. You, oh, well, that's funny. Wait a minute. Jeff says, did you already do the Audible ad? I was just signing up again. <laughs> It's true. That's why I wasn't watching the show. I was I was busy signing up again because I was I realized I was buying three books and I said this is stupid. Yeah, you need two bucks a book. What books are so you I subscribed buying? Again. Um, I bought all of Jeff's some, books am, are on Audible. I, they should, yes, don't they you are. get like a complimentary membership or something? No, I should. I should. Go good and the geeks only ninety nine cents. Yeah. I have just finishing the island at the center of the universe or the world or whatever it's called. Russell Shorto's history of Manhattan. It's wonderful. Ooh, I like that. Read before that. Russell Shorto's history of Amsterdam. Yeah. As the, the great liberal city, it is just magnificent. And uh, I just bought the biography of money. Wow, you are an intellectual. No, I just need something while I walk. This Boring sounds good. The island at the center of the world. It's great. It is just, there's a guy named, sorry, Adrian von der Donk. <laughs> Those Dutch. Ooh, I really want to start a Kickstarter campaign tomorrow to build a statue for Adrian von der Donk. If Vanderdonk hadn't done it, there'd be no Manhattan. <clears throat> right. Vanderdonk is really one of the the fathers, un, unheralded fathers of the American way of life, of <laughs> independence and equality and self-government. And I'm just amazed by this. And, and you, you ever heard of Vanderdonk? Never heard of him. Dunk? Never heard of the, the Vanderdonk. Uh, Mr. Vanderdonk? Is amazing. So I'm 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 inspired by Adrian Vanderdonk. Right now across America, people are going to Wikipedia <laughs> to find out who the hell is Adrian. Or just get Vanderdonk. that book. Just get that book. It's good. It's very good. I, and so it's 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 very good. Uh, I listened to the whole thing on Audible. I'm at the last exciting minutes, just as the British are about to take over Manhattan, and I'm rooting for the Dutch to win myself. <laughs> Sorry. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Patrick, you had a, a, a something to pose, uh, Jeff. Uh, yeah, I just, I well, I I just wanted to gloat uh, a little oh, bit no. and also get uh -oh. Jeff's uh, take uh -oh. on this topic. Um, you, you I, you're aware, I'm sure, of the European Parliament uh, passing very strong net neutrality laws uh, this Good week. Good topic, Patrick. <laughs> Thank you. I, I I thought you'd like it. Tell me what they did because I did not know this. Being a so, provincial American. <laughs> so basically, um, the EU, the European Parliament, had a very important vote on uh, net neutrality. Uh, I believe it was this week. Um, yes, it was. It was this last week. Yes. It was. Uh, yeah, last week. Obviously, sorry. Nelly, um, Nelly and, Cruz. And, N N yeah, Nelly Cruz had a, um, a somewhat. Semi-controversial uh, text uh, before the parliament, but then a number of uh, very active uh, left-wing um, parliamentaries uh, just swept in and changed it completely, changed the text, uh, passed a number of amendments that makes this, this text very, very uh, uh, net, well, makes the, the text very net neutral in the, the sense that we as techies would think of it. There are no very few, very, very few exceptions, no special services that were a, a big uh, uh, point of contention uh, in the text that would have allowed the ISPs to uh, create special channels for certain deals that they would want to make. All of that is gone. And what remains is a text that makes it uh, that enforces net neutrality in all of Europe. And that's Absolutely honestly right. amazing. We didn't think it was going to happen like this, and it was the best news of the year uh, for for people like us. So I, explain, I, I salute you. I, 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 I sometimes make fun of my European friends. I sometimes make fun, fun of the EU. I am wrong. I salute you. Uh, <laughs> Excellent legislation. Yeah, as Patrick said, the, the law came in when it was done with all the EU politics, had a lot of exceptions. And as Patrick said, all the left-wing people pulled one by one amendments to pull the exceptions out. And it is real net neutrality legislation in the EU. And it's it leaves us in America in the dust. 
Wow. These, now, uh, tell me a little bit, because I'm an uh, ignorant American. This has the force of law everywhere in the EU? Like, it, mm -hmm. it, it, it everybody so, has to adhere to this? What is the enforcement? How does it work? It, it, it needs to be adapted to each country, uh, but essentially, yes, it needs to, it, it has to be adapted in, in every country that's a member of the union. Um, so it, it has force of law and it comes uh, to, in, in opposition of certain rules that people were thinking about putting in place uh, to, to counteract uh, Netflix coming in, in France, for example. There were a number of those special services that people wanted to implement. And, uh, but yeah, it's essentially law within the next few months, unless something incredible happens that I'm not aware uh, that could happen. Uh, it is now law in uh, net neutrality as we think of it. And that's very important because a lot of, uh, a lot of people have been starting to sort of you know, to try and rebrand net neutrality, to try and say, yes, okay, you need to be neutral, but if you have this case or this case, then you can make exceptions. But that's not the way the law was, was passed. Um, so yeah, again, it's it's law uh, uh, in in all of the member states of uh, of the union. Yeah, the reason we know it's good is because four big telecommunications companies, according to a Michael Furtick piece in Forbes, uh, condemned the legislation. So that's how we know it. <laughs> it could never well, happen here. You know, it's so funny because I was watching TV3 uh, just the other day, and uh, and I saw, well, let me see if I can find it here. Um, TV3? Yeah, in France. And it was Parlez so good. Français? It was so good. Fran France 3, maybe? France 3. Is that, the, is that what they call it Possibly, now? Yeah. Oh, I love hearing you say that. That's <laughs> so good. <laughs> I, I can say na names of cheese later if you want. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> we can just listen. It'll be so fun. Um, but the, the really, the really weird thing was that the the law initially was basically tailored to uh, ISPs uh, and to cable providers, and I, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but within two days, it completely changed and it passed. It was very strange. And of course, in the in light of what happened in the U.S. a, a couple of months ago with the uh, uh, net neutrality being uh, not debunked but rejected, um, that that's very. I think I, I so to make it a little bit uh, uh, more global. I do think that is going to make it a little bit more difficult for other countries to 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 uh, uh, reject net Screw neutrality. Screw their customers. Well, this yeah, is it. Rude I feel like citizen, that. I, put it that way? That's what Francois, right? I think this is yes, it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Les <laughs> jeunes. Well, oh, you're just Paris. showing Youngsters off. Youngsters of International Paris. Leo. Mr. Cosmopolitan. Okay. Putin. <laughs> I love French awesome. television. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Je suis Francois. Je suis occupé. Ah. I even understand it, which is great. Absolutely not. Laissez-moi tranquille, la perte. Ah uh, ouais! Stuart! Did you see this, Patrick? <laughs> I did not. <laughs> <laughs> this is Saturday Night Live last night. <laughs> this is the French dance. What sprockets? What's the <laughs> it's the new sprockets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, we're going to get banned from YouTube now. This is all in coverage of the new French net neutrality law. <laughs> Completely appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough of that. <laughs> you know what's so sad is like I was trying to look up the all the Saturday Night Live skits from last night, of which that was one, and you can't see. That was like only one. That was one of the only ones that you could actually find I know. online. Because they, uh, a bunch of the music, because Anna Kendrick is a singer, so they used a bunch of music for her skits. And it's just like, they, can't, I mean, they don't have the rights. They show it on TV, but not on online. Just, I know, I know they so don't have the rights. But it just seems stupid. Turkey lifts the Twitter ban. Apparently it was illegal. This is why, and, uh, and the YouTube ban violates human rights. Yay. Yay. So uh, this is why you don't want to try to shut down the internet in a democratic republic. Uh, just people, you know, there's other, there's, uh, court limits restrictions to 15, uh, videos on YouTube. Um, that was right after the ruling that scrapped the ban on uh, Twitter. So it was, it's the Turkish prime minister 
uh, Erdogan, who has been trying to uh, uh, shut down social media, primarily because it uh, carries stuff that's uh, unflattering to his government. And he was coming up with great, there were some great, great memes online, pictures of him with ridiculous <laughs> statements of his about, yeah. about the net and Twitter and how Twitter is evil and awful. Well, there you go. Victory in uh, Turkey so far, anyway. And it's kind of interesting to think that he's he's banning them, and he's got this image of dictator almost, you know, to to people to a lot of people who probably hear of him for the first time with with this, and then the court says he can't do it, and he's like, oh, right, okay, well, I guess we won't do it. Never mind. It's <laughs> but I'll tell you one <laughs> thing: you can't do in this country, and you can't take a selfie with the president of the United States using a Samsung phone. <laughs> That's not exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> David Ortiz, a Red Sox a ball player, apparently has a deal with Samsung and took a selfie uh, with the president in which the Samsung Galaxy Note 3 was, I think, fairly prominently revealed. Very much like Ellen's uh, yeah. selfie. The, the White House said the president's legal team objects to the company's commercial well, use of the do photograph. He is a public figure. It was done in public. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not it. the selfie that's the problem. It's that someone took a picture of the picture, right? Taking. Oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it isn't. That's right. They're not transmitting the selfie. Yeah. The selfie oh, doesn't right. say, right, like, right. sponsored by Samsung on it. That it's isn't it. the selfie, of course. Samsung tweets the picture of the selfie. Um, and, of that's course, problem. another home run for Samsung. Yeah, Samsung. Social media. Here's, here's my prediction. Yeah. My prediction is the next one, the Pope. Oh, I think we can arrange that. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to happen. I know the Pope's tech Samsung, guy. Samsung's heading to Rome. I'm betting on the Pope. So the video, uh, here's the video of the of the scene at the White House. It looks like it might fit him better than me, though. Uh, Ortiz gives Obama his own uh, Red Sox jersey and then whips out his conveniently placed <laughs> Samsung smartphone. Big poppy selfie. Big poppy selfie. Big Poppy's, you know, that Note 3 looks kind of small in Big Poppy's hand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the guy that phone was designed for. I think they made the right deal on that one. Yeah, I guess the White House is objecting. But what are you, what are you going to do? you 50 grand, yeah. yeah. What, what are you gonna, huh? Wait, you can wear that suit, but you cannot take a selfie with the president? <laughs> that suit is quite something. Guy, for those listening, I don't know who, which Red Sox that is, but he's wearing a... An American flag suit. In my day, in my day, young <laughs> Chad, you honestly could have been arrested for for desecration of the flag. For I, I, that's I agree. I, I was well. A, that's <laughs> thanks to that liberal Supreme Court. Now Jeez. anything goes with our American flag. Hey, speaking of SCOTUS, uh, of course, it was this week that the Supreme Court entirely uh, disenfranchised all Americans by saying there is no limit to the amount of money. Uh, you can donate a corporation or or individual could donate to uh, you can, you're limited per candidate but you're not now limited in total you say you can donate to every damned Republican across the country should right. you wish or using a, uh, a a variety of different packs and and yes. uh, interest groups and uh, you can just go the sky's the limit go have fun <laughs> knock yourself out um what do you think of that Jeff <laughs> let me just ask Jeff Jarvis off the top of his head what do you think of that? <laughs> I, I I agree with Larry Lessig that money is is unbelievably corrupting to our legislative and government branches. Yeah. I believe it's the the root of our mess. Um, I don't think the companies are people and have rights. However, at some point, um, in, in in a media economy that's that's built on buying TV time, uh, artificial limits are difficult. To put forward, so I don't think the solution is trying to limit the money. I think the solution is is not having five year campaigns. But I don't know how you, I don't know how you do that. I do feel like we're on our way to a plutocracy where the yeah. rich the rich get to buy Congress and buy yeah. But there is a solution to this, and there's a tech angle to this, frankly, um, uh, which is why I bring it up. There is a solution to this. So really, what they're buying with all that money is votes. They're buying ads. They're buying uh, influence. Um, but ultimately, uh, the voter still controls who's in Congress. And I think the Internet offers a real alternative to making your decision about who to vote uh, for uh, from television commercials. 
So um, so maybe maybe now there is no limit on but here's the question: the amount of money you can donate to a campaign. But folks, there is an opportunity to figure out yes who you like and who you don't like by going on the internet and doing your research and then voting. The key here is to me. We're only going to end the hegemony of television in this country. I mean, it doesn't happen in Europe because you are limited to what you can spend on, on campaigns, and the campaigns are short. So once again, I salute Europe. Um, <laughs> but in this country, uh, Mark Andreessen was talking about, about, about um, in Twitter, he went off on another Twitter rant, you know, saying, well, but don't, even poor people all have one vote, so how do they limit this? But, but, but clearly there's, there's money spent that has an impact on opinion, that has an impact on everything. The question is this. The first person who's who's elected to, let's say, Congress by the Internet without television, that's when the revolution starts. Right. And, that, we and we're that. nowhere near that. We no. are nowhere near that. No. Everybody still gets elected by television. But if you could possibly use the Internet to get elected, that makes the Internet an equally powerful tool. And don't. So what you're saying is that we need the Justin Bieber of Congress. <laughs> <laughs> you know that. Well, you, you could make the case yeah, that. Yeah. Well, we don't forget we had we had uh, Gopher from Love Boat. We're probably yeah. to say in this country and and uh, uh, Sonny Bono. Sonny Bono. So yeah, you yeah. know what the heck. But then again, you have a head of state who's having affairs around, and nobody thinks it's a big <laughs> deal, which I think is pretty cool. <laughs> Francois Hollande for Congress. Yes, no, that's, that, that's what we're managing to to achieve. Uh, yes, in, in I, you should Congress. be proud. That's proud. <laughs> uh, we are. I, I would just say, I know a lot of techies, it's very fashionable among geeks to say, oh, your vote doesn't count. You're participating in a corrupt system. I just, I, I, I'm not going to get involved. Your vote does count. You, if you think it's a corrupt system, vote. Because if you don't vote, it is, guarantee you, it will be a corrupt system. And, and you know how much it counts? It counts exactly as much as everyone else's. Yeah. That's the, the, the idea of the thing. So, yes, it does count. Yeah. And this from a Frenchman. <laughs> 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 you know, I, I thought it was interesting. What was the story uh, about... Um, uh, there was a French story. Wasn't there, Chad... People were scandalized by something, some form of nudity. I don't remember this at all. And then I was talking about Liberté, and she's bare-breasted, but the French didn't... What was that? I've forgotten now. Is it, it, was this a text Chad, story? Yeah, well, it might, it might have been a text story. I don't remember, I don't remember this at all. Anyway. Chat room? I'll just edit this part out. This, <laughs> okay. this, is where, this is where the senility finally I'm gonna, I'm gonna try finally to happened. bare Breasts. No, it wasn't <laughs> bare breasts. It was something else that the, the French were scandalized by. And I thought, this is odd, given that Liberté has been naked since 1789. Oh, I see. Oh, we have no problem with bare breasts. Well, I thought That's so. Whatever. Maybe it was just a dream. I don't think so. <laughs> it was a dream I had. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to, speaking of Game of Thrones, right after Game of Thrones, all of Silicon Valley will be watching a show called. Silicon Valley debuts tonight. Um, it's kind of Game of Thrones for geeks, actually. Liz, have you guys... Oh, have, it was the strap on the shoulder. Thank you. Thank you. It was. It was the controversy. We were talking oh. on Mac Break Week oh, with the Andy and oh. It was the controversy over the altered... Uh, Delacroix's altered... Not Delacroix. Um, See now again, and I'm then really you found ten dollars, right? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's the painting. Remember the painting that he was talking about uh, in the Boston Public yeah. Library. Yeah. Back to Silicon Valley. <laughs> Cultures are weird. <laughs> Cultures weird. Chat room, back me up. I, I, we, we. Anyway. <laughs> Silicon Valley. Anybody? There was a. I wish I. I don't yeah. know why we didn't get invited to this. But there was in Palo Alto a screening this week in Redwood City. I, I Redwood went to City. It. Did you go it for a report? Yes. Yes. Uh, so what'd you think? What'd you think, Liz? I laughed. I am not. I have not a great track record for knowing what will resonate with a larger audience. But the it was very funny. Um, so the premise is it's a group of guys, of all guys, um, who uh, one of them has uh, an idea and is and they, they live together in a startup incubator slash hostile kind of thing. Um, and he has an idea that turns out to be technically significant. And in the first episode, um, his company wants to buy it from him or a VC that's modeled on Peter Thiel wants him to, 
wants to invest in it. Um, so like the drama is is actually the drama of running a startup. It's like, should we take the money? The second episode is all about like, can we uh, involve the guy who's not really contributing to the project? How much equity should he get? So does that have large mainstream appeal? I don't know, but it's really funnily written. Mike Judge did it. He did Beavis and Butthead, but more importantly, Office Space, which is to this day the classic on life in a cube farm in a tech company. Um, yeah, and there's and he gets it too. There's not like a lot of lines that fall really off. So that's know? he good. doesn't have a lot of of uh, I yeah. That's good. So there's definitely the the doctor pitching you the app as he's giving you your checkup for your anxiety attack, um, which has <laughs> happened to me. I, not for an anxiety attack, but my doctors have definitely talked tech with me. Yeah, you, what app would you recommend? Uh, for <laughs> so um, Nellie Bowles was there from uh, from uh, Re Recode. And uh, she wrote an article worthy of Gawker. I want to congratulate Nellie on this. Because no, better than Gawker because she doesn't hate everything. No. She's, she's awesome. She's like, <laughs> she, she, she's a culture reporter who thinks culture is interesting. Yeah, yeah. she was great. Yeah. She, well she, she went to the movie, I guess with you, uh, or the TV show, I should say. And uh, then afterwards, there was a little, uh, little get together. Um, this is with at the Fox Theater in uh, Redwood City. Uh, and she says Elon Musk was there. This is hilarious. <laughs> he says, the truth, it's stranger than the fiction. Most startups are a soap opera, but not that kind of a soap opera. He didn't like the show. Um, he says, thumbs very much down. None of those characters were software engineers. Software engineers are more helpful, thoughtful, and smarter. They're weird, but not in the same way, he insisted. I was just having a meeting with my information security team, and they're great, but they're pretty effing weird. One used to be a dude, one's super small, one's hyper smart. That's actually what it is. This is, this that is would a, make for an awesome show. I uh, once it gets, a dude, once was, oh it gets weirder. He says, I really feel like Mike Judge has never been to Burning Man. Yeah, that that's that just that just that's the best away. line. Which is Silicon Valley. If you haven't been, you just don't get it. You could take the craziest LA party and multiply it by a thousand, and it doesn't even get effing close to what's in Silicon Valley. The show didn't have any of that. What's the, funny is uh if you look on the Wall Street Journal, I think. Elon Musk also gave them an interview, and I think it was maybe a few beverages earlier in the evening. And yeah. like a, slightly, <laughs> a slightly more even keel take. <laughs> He's, he does sound a little a little uh, schnockered here. The parties I mean, in Silicon I, I, Valley are amazing <laughs> because people don't care how they're perceived socially, which I don't think Mike got. See, if you read it like that, it all makes more sense. Hollywood is a place where people always care what the public will think of them, and this show felt more like that. I lived in Hollywood 12 years, and I've never been to an effing good party. He then reached for a bacon waffle, writes Nellie. And <laughs> and it was a tasty bacon waffle. It sounded tasty. A little tiny bite, yes. I would love a bacon waffle uh, oh. hors d'oeuvre. And proclaimed he would take Judge to Burning Man this year. A Leo, have you this is the way, man. This is my favorite line. Despite some misgivings about the show, it was clear Musk was definitely more of a star than anyone present at the premiere. A coterie of millennial women waiting for him to break away from the group <laughs> circled him, and he disappeared into the night. <laughs> I added the disappeared into the night, but I think that's what happened. It's true. He was definitely the biggest star there. And He's that includes all the people in the show because they're kind of like, you they're know, they're, they're, they play the nerdy guy right. in every other movie, and they just brought them all together into one show now. That's my favorite, true. My favorite you, description, I haven't seen, I don't know where I saw this, but it was something like, I think it was called the Asperger's Entourage. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. <laughs> that but it's bad. true. If you look at this picture of the cast, and Mike's in the, in the middle, uh, you've seen them all before as the nerdy guy on various, you know, there's I think actually the, the a office. bunch of them, at least that one on the, the far right, he was in the Google movie, the internship. He so was in the it's, internship. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Cast of characters. Yeah, yeah. Th this guy, he's too good looking. He's obviously in marketing. Uh, this this guy he was in the office yeah, uh, the guy in the brown shirt was in the outright right? yeah yeah so and this guy looks familiar I don't know anyway and you got your token Indian yeah he was guy. in Freaks and Geeks Freaks and Geeks thank you love that so show. Leo Leo this I should know this about you I should I should see it on your bio have you been to Burning Man no well you know oh I thought the line by the way I I'm sorry <laughs> You're not answering the question I'm sorry I thought of the line here's the line you say oh I haven't been to Burning Man since it left San Francisco. <laughs> That's the line. That one-ups them all. It does. Right? Uh, I stopped yeah. going when it left San Francisco.
<clears throat> which is actually true, but I, uh, I don't think that really counts. I, I, by the way, I want to make an invitation to Kevin Rose, to all San Francisco tech people, leave the Bay Area, come to New York. We love you. Yeah. People and would you already be... have a, a, a rent problem in New York, oh, yeah. so... <laughs> yeah, so it wouldn't, nobody well, would no, notice. I'll, I'll, amend, I'll amend it, Patrick. Come to New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> New Jersey could really use you. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 uh, so I guess the question is, Liz, should I watch this live or, or wait and watch it on demand later? Well, it's on demand tomorrow, right? So yeah. watch it, you know. Watch, watch it, when it whenever you, you want, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's only stars, eight episodes. Stars, Liz. How many stars? Out of five. How many stars? How many stars? Oh, me? Yeah. Um, yeah. Remember, uh, Jeff thought, used to, So you could actually say something, yeah. Jeff used to be a TV yeah, critic. Yeah, I know. It's funny. I, it's, uh, it's, it's three to four, you know? Like, it, it made yeah. me crack up, but it didn't change my life. Three and a half stars. Well, here's the question. From what, I, what I've seen from what judges said, it seems to be uh, adoring of the tech community. Is it too fawning? Oh, no. It's very funny. No. It's very sly about making fun of people. Actually, it was oh, funny. I don't know if you saw the Valley Wag review. They loved it because they thought it was fittingly mean to the Silicon Valley yeah. community. Oh, yeah. so that's enough. Of but we can laugh at ourselves. All right. Somebody in the chat, people in the chat room are saying I should live tweet it tonight. But the well, that's a good idea. That would be great. <laughs> All right. And I, will, <laughs> I will live tweet my viewing. <laughs> Actually, to really do it right, I should TiVo it and watch it in a week and then live tweet it. Uh, Somebody in the chat room also says we should talk about Letterman. You should you should be the next Letterman, Leo. I just wanted to get that oh, on the record. Oh no, I I am sad about Letterman. I'm but, very uh, sad. He I'm is uh, yeah. So I think it's your it's our generation, uh, Jeff. Yes, it is. Uh, he was the Carson of our generation. Oh, yeah, we had Carson, was. but um, he was the fresh, young, funny guy who kind of thumbed his nose at uh, mainstream television. My father's generation's timing in comedy was made by by Carson. I mean, yes. if, if somebody my father's age tells a joke, you hear Carson timing. Our age, you hear Letterman timing. Absolutely. I think yeah, I think my son's age, I think Jake's age, I think it's John Stewart timing. John Stewart is absolutely. And that's one of the reasons why uh, Letterman's retired. He announced his retirement this week, uh, next year, uh, when his contract runs out. He's 66. I think one of the reasons that it didn't get a lot of attention is the, the world has moved on a little bit. And Stewart yeah, and, uh, and yeah. Colbert, who is uh, supposedly number one, to replace him, they've replaced uh, him already culturally. Anyway, yeah. But uh, I'm very much influenced by David Letterman. I, you know, so, yeah, yeah. So I'm here. And Carson, and Carson. Somewhere I have a thank you note from David Letterman. You know, Johnny Carson used to go, really. That's nice. Yeah, it, said it was signed wow. your friend Dave. However, Letterman never let TV critics sit in the audience, so I wasn't allowed to go sit in the show. I went once, and they spotted me immediately because they have a a, a scrum. That afternoon at the uh, at the CBS uh, Theater uh, to get tickets for that night's show, and so I went to the Scrum, and they've got people. It's really interesting. They've got producers walking around in the group uh, because they kind of they they talk with you, and then if you if you're fun and interesting, they give you oh. a ticket. You have to earn a ticket. Uh, wow. So they're talking to everybody, and this guy immediately said, "Oh, hi, Leo. Here's a ticket," and they put me way up in the balcony. <laughs> If you're in the business, first of all, the fact that he even knew who I was blew my mind. But then, but I think that's his job, right, is to spot right. industry types and put them in the balcony because they want real people who are going to go, hey, yeah. David, I love you, in the front, right, yeah. you know, where you can. So I am way up, at, but it was fun. It's great. To, it was great to see. I watched Car I got to go to a Carson, too. Um, wow. Was it? Yeah, really amazing. And I'm not talking Carson Daly. Uh Patrick, you know, sorry, for, sorry for that that old folks moment. Johnny Carson used to go to France because nobody knew who he was. Do you even know who we're talking about here? Uh, I watch a lot of uh, American television okay. and movies. Okay, but you used I'm to have fairly sure that the average that, French that person that does not. No know. idea. Carson said it's the only place I can, you know, I can go there and be a normal person. He couldn't do that in America. Our show today. Thank you so much for being here, Jeff and uh, Patrick and Liz. You are. My best friends forever, because everybody else is watching Game of Thrones right now. <laughs> so we're just to say <laughs> we're the we're we're the extra choices here. We're the fifth and sixth and seventh choices. That's what he's was <laughs> saying. Patrick already <laughs> observed that. <laughs> hey, we had Kevin Rose. That's a number one. That's a top That's of the big. top That's of the big. list. And That's Liz big. has been booked for months. She forgot this was Game of Thrones night. She would be <laughs> at the red wedding parties with everybody else right now. Do you have a it's do you do it? It hasn't started yet. You got time. Yeah, it's the East Coast folks that we couldn't get. Our show today brought to you by Squarespace. Oh, 
We love Squarespace, mostly because every time I send people to a website, I did it earlier, uh, I have to quickly type in the site and then tell them the URL because it brings every site down. Squarespace, I don't have to worry about that. If you're running your website on a Squarespace site, you cannot bring it down. We've tried a hundred times. That That's because they are doing the best hosting out there. And part of the reason the hosting is so good, and they, exp they explain this to me, and I'm not going to try to explain it. I was at in New York with the Squarespace team, great people, and they were explaining, well, the integration of the software with the Java virtual platform allows us to do virtualization on the servers, and we can turn up the bandwidth whenever. It's a, they, there's a whole technical reason. But it's because the software and the hosting are so tightly integrated that they can do this. And, man, are they always working on their platform? Smart people, designers, engineers, who are really making it work. They, the 25 templates now. But that's the starting point. It's not a cookie cutter because you don't, you know, you can move stuff around point and click. You can get everything in there. They've got the logo creator tool, uh, the, the mobile apps, which are the best in the business. They're truly gorgeous. It's very easy to use, but they also have brilliant support, live chat and email support 24-7, a completely redesigned customer help site for easier access. These guys can't sit still. They got to make it better all the time, better all the time. Easier access to self-help articles, video workshops, They've now got e-commerce on all subscription levels, which is great because for the uh, the low, you know, the $8 a month plan, which would be great for a school or a nonprofit, you can accept donations. That's built in. Uh, you could have a cash wedding registry. I mean, there's it's $8 a month, and you get the free domain name when you sign up for the annual plan. Uh, it, that's the hosting plus the software. Full e-commerce for $24, bucks, and that includes... Shipping calculators, inventory control, integrated accounting. Um, they do the fulfillment, everything. Plus a developer platform that's second to none. If you really know what you're doing, you're going to love it. Squarespace. Here's what you do. Go to squarespace.com. Click the Get Started button. You have two weeks. You don't need to give our offer code or anything or even a credit card number. Just, you know, two weeks of... Uh, playing with Squarespace, really import your data from, they have importers for all the blog APIs. Import your data from your existing site, including the pictures, the comments, everything. Play with it. Change templates. The templates are tight, are beautifully done so that they are completely independent of the content. So it, it you know, it's like, a, what was that, Zen Garden, where you can just change the template, boom, push a button. It, everything looks different. It's so nice. Play with it. You'll love it. Squarespace.com. If you do decide to buy 10% off when you use our offer code, twit. Squarespace.com. If you missed this week, we don't have a, the best of? No, we, we do. I was just... I'm sorry. I didn't mean to wake you. I just... Uh, <laughs> I didn't have it ready. Chad, go, Chad, it, it all... Well, for, from, see, from the back, I... <laughs> the bright red hair, I can see it when you're not... You got your head on the... You guys got his head on the desk, and I said, if you missed anything, he went, oh! And his <laughs> head like, pops you're, uh, We got to we gotta get ready, ready for that <laughs> twin uh, <laughs> thing. Yeah. If you missed anything this week, take a look. Previously <laughs> on Twit, Twit Live Specials. I am thrilled for the opportunity to talk to uh, Vince Cerf. He's often called one of the fathers of the internet. The value of the network comes from what we put into it and what we get out of it. And that the benefits far outweigh some of the risk factors. Tech news tonight. We start the program today with Amazon's Fire TV, a new set-top box the company unveiled at its media event. Amazon has the potential to kind of build this niche market, uh, make Android games that could be the equivalent of console games. Windows Weekly. And he's looking even more emo with that haircut than ever before. And I'm afraid I mocked him. I am reasonably sure he still can't grow facial hair. <laughs> Triangulation. We can read minds, move objects with the mind, record memories, upload memories, and even photograph a dream. All of that has been done in the laboratory. Twit, broadcasting from the capital of the free world, Petaluma, California. Somebody did point out who was watching at home that your shoulders are so much broader than mine. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and they said, maybe you should fix the cameras, but no. I am in general more masculine than you, you are. <laughs> you are in general. They really are broad. That was Paul Therott. I'm sorry, I interrupted you, uh, Jeff. Did you? Were you saying something? No, I was just making fun of you. For the, that it's your job to, to vamp until, until Chad's ready. Oh, I can fill like nobody's business. This is kind of my, my job. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the filler. Uh, oh, maybe that's what they meant when they said, you're the filler. In my first job. Uh, Apple suing Samsung for $2 billion. It seems like we've seen this before. Can't we just get along? <laughs> Jeez Louise. 
Uh, $2 billion uh, over uh, five iPhone features that Apple said they created but uh, Google stole. Are you ready for this? Is this a really, is this really, oh, wait a minute, this is April Fool's. This is not an no, April Fool's. No, this is the software version. The last one was the hardware. <laughs> it feels like a joke. Addresses, dates, phone numbers, and times appearing as links in text messages. You get a text message with a date, you can click on it, and your calendar opens. Mm -hmm. Apple says, we got a patent in 1999. Background data syncing. Not allowed unless you're Apple, apparently, or license it. They have a patent for asynchronous data synchronization among devices while in use. I, You know, if, if, if the court rules this is a good patent, they got them. Universal search. When you search for something on your iPhone... It uh, it searches, it gives you an option to search the web or Wikipedia. Apparently, Apple owns that, too. They got a patent in 2005 for a universal interface for retrieval of information in a computer system. It seems like Google's been doing that for, but I, okay. Yeah, it's also <sighs> offensive. Slide to unlock. We invented that, too. I'm reading uh, Fred Vogelstein's book. He's the Wired writer who wrote the book Dogfight. And these two companies do not like each other. This is the legacy of Steve Jobs. Autocomplete texts. Again, and something <laughs> seems like I've seen before, the iPhone. Ath Apple has a patent called Method, System, and Graphical User Interface for providing word recommendations or autocomplete. Apple says, we own autocomplete. Well, aren't those like super, like when you, you hear the title of the patent, it seems like it covers a very large uh, uh, type of operation. But actually, when you dive into the patent, it's very specific. No. Uh, so he, he, so, so here's, very, here's how our patent system works here in the United States of America. Uh, every, and every patent lawyer knows this. When you write a patent specification, you write it absolutely as broadly as you possibly can. Intentionally. Uh, because for this very reason, because and as long as you get the patent, you're golden. And the problem is the way the patent office seems to work is they feel that, you know, barring any substantive dispute, we're going to approve this patent and let the courts decide if there should be an issue. It's it. The problem is software patents, plain and simple. These these should not be allowed. So do they? What, ever when is the Supreme Court going to rule on that? Yeah. Uh, it's this. It's this term. They've. I, they've heard the. Have they heard the arguments? I think they've heard the arguments. Um. It. You know. I understand. I. I mean, reading Vogelstein's book is great, because you really go back in time, to 2007 when Apple. Yeah, did a lot of brilliant work. The iPhone was not a given by any means. None of this had been done. Right down to touch screens, uh, on, a, on a screen that size, multi-touch. This was all brilliant, brilliant work, and they deserve all credit for that. Um, and there's no question that Google completely copied it, right? I mean, they 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 were their version of Android was basically a BlackBerry before that. Yeah, I'm not mistaken. There's there, a smoke, right? the smoking gun. Yeah. Uh, we, we've, well, se we've seen the email. It said, "Oh Christ, we just saw the uh, iPhone back to the drawing board." <laughs> and it's it's really true when I hold up this. This HTC, uh, the new uh, HTC One, eh, you know, this is all, it's all, it's all slide to everything. It's all in there. It's not just Samsung. In fact, I think it's pretty clear that this Samsung is a proxy for Google and all of this, right? Yeah, but still, I mean, I think that, there that, are. Uh, Go ahead. It's uh, pretty. Liz. So I, I had a chance to look through the documents uh, yesterday since I am on weekend duty, and. Um, it's pretty clear in some cases that Samsung was just looking at, like there's a there's a document, there's a mock-up where they have, here's our slide to unlock feature. It doesn't really work. Here's Apple's slide to unlock feature. Like, how can we make it more like their feature? Um, but I can't, I just don't understand Apple's rationale here, why they're they're going to court to deal with the, you know, the, the, to defend themselves um, for for things that are, that are really quite obvious and not that. I mean, it, it, they just, they... Seems like they are really, really upset about something that doesn't really matter that much. That's what I feel. It's Steve Jobs' uh, uh, initial upset over this. We're going nuclear, he told Walter, Walter Isaacson. We're going nuclear against Google on this. 
that still lives on. And I really did think yeah, that. Yeah, and then actually the documents that came out, there was him saying he had a, he was mounting a holy war. That was his plan for 2011, a holy war against Google. Uh, and, and But there's, you know, there's some interesting tidbits in there. For me, it's, it's fun reading. I don't understand why they hate Google and Samsung enough to bring this stuff out. But there's some... Uh, Phil Schiller watching uh, the 2013 Samsung Super Bowl commercial has like an emergency note to their ad agency saying like, these guys are nailing it. Like Samsung's ad is awesome. Like, why don't we have something as good as their ad? It's like, you know, it's a little bit of a peek behind the curtain. Ina Fried's article in uh, Recode is, uh, is all about this uh, Apple document. Um, a really, really uh, good article. Um, Apple was worried. Do you think Apple still is worried? I guess they are. They should be. Um, Samsung's well, they, selling like hotcakes. And the yep. problem is, I think that there's a little bit of resentment on Apple's part there because it's happened before. They they were there with the Mac before and Microsoft copied them and, and won. And they won the war. And it's it, they're still more or less, you know, balanced uh, iOS and Android now. But there's a real chance that Android is going to eclipse the iPhone even more than it already has. Uh, there was a time where the iPhones was 80% of the smartphone business. Um, so it's a, it might be a little bit of, you know, fool me once, uh, you know, they can live with it, but it's happening again. So I can see how Jobs would be very upset about it. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, The Verge has a uh, Steve Jobs email um, uh, and it, you know, it's, it's, what's great about the lawsuit is the discovery because we're yeah. seeing all of this stuff. Um, this is, uh, do not FYI, do not forward from Steve jobs to the, uh, to ET, which is, I guess a group, um, and what the strategy is, uh, whole, and there's the line, holy war with Google 2011. It's on their roadmap. It's on but there. If you look, so there, it goes both ways, though. If you look at the um, documents that Apple has released about Samsung, um, there's one that says, you know, our number one objective is to go up against the iPhone. Like, this is our total focus is, like, kill the iPhone, right? So, I mean, it's not it's not a patent infringement to say that on your internal roadmap, but it is kind of salacious and interesting for the rest of us who are watching. Yeah. If I'm not thrilled about the lawsuit, but I'm really enjoying the discovery, I have to say. <laughs> it is. And really, that's why Apple shouldn't be doing this. I think they pay a higher price doing this. Maybe they get, so they get $2 billion. Maybe they win and they get $2 billion. But really, do you want all this stuff to come out? And do you want people to perceive you as petty? Um, win by making a better product. And the problem is Apple hasn't made any new better products lately. So it, it starts to become, it starts to look like a patent troll unless it has some real creativity coming out. Do, what is, you know, in the United States, app, uh, iPhones are dominant. I mean, they really are. Everybody carries them, certainly in the coasts. No, just among your friends. The numbers are Android. Well, it's maybe 50-50, but, but a lot of iPhones no. out there. <laughs> no. No. I thought it was. I think if you look at total sales, I know you got a Nexus Five. I see your Nexus Five, and I'll raise you an HTC One. Yeah, what do you carry? Yeah, <laughs> and a and a Moto X. I'm going back and forth. I you are going back and forth. Oh. You know, there's a rumor that there's this X Plus One. The Moto X Plus One might be coming out. This is Evleaks posted a very cryptic tweet yesterday. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing about that is we are we do expect it. They've even said a new Motorola X this summer. And, you know, just Motorola, just be paying attention to the this and make, just make a better one, okay? Um, Apple is 42% of U.S. smartphones and growing. And uh, and growing. That's important. The market share is growing. Tell me, Patrick, in France. Uh, um, yeah, I don't have the exact number. But what's, how's, what's but the I perception? What do, do, Blackberry, probably. Huh? France is Blackberry. <laughs> Jerry Lewis, the phones. Please. Jeff, that is not funny. Now, <laughs> I can take a little bit of fun, but that's just... That's going too far. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, I mean, obviously, when, when the iPhone first came out, it was the holy grail, I guess. Uh, and everyone wanted one, and it was everywhere. You know, you would go on the metro, and, and everyone would put the... Uh, 
get their their iPhone out. Uh, now I think it's a little bit more in line with the uh, with the US. It's maybe forty, a little bit less, thirty uh, percent, something like that. It goes back and forth, but. Uh, the image of Apple has eroded a little bit, and uh, we don't we don't see it as interesting as it was when I first came out. And even myself, who is a, I, I got the first few iPhones, you know, the day they came out, I still I'm still using a, a, a 4s now, and I'm what? kind of happy with it. Oh, you I'm not going to talk a... to you anymore. The 4s, <laughs> what are you nuts? That's, that's yeah, years old. so. And I'm not. I'm not the only one. There are there are a lot of people who think that uh, it it's it's become. I guess that's how I would frame it. Uh, it used to be that if you were serious about wanting a cool phone, you would get a or an actually good phone, you would get an iPhone. And now it's really a matter of choice. Uh, th there's a good reason for. There are lots of good reasons to get an iPhone. Lots of good reasons to get uh, a, an Android phone. And, you know, a few reasons to get a Windows phone. But um, So, Jeff, your Windows perception phone. is very interesting because I think you're right. I think that is the general perception. But according to NPD, Apple has 45% market share, at least in sales in last year, compared to 24%. I'm sorry, 26% uh, for Samsung. Well, uh, Samsung, what's Android all over? Oh, and Android, Android overall is, Android 40, is equal. Crazy. It's 50-50 overall. 40, yeah, they're 50-50, which is phenomenal, and considering that Apple created the market. And worldwide, Android's going berserk because the price point is... That's what I was interested in, worldwide, yes. I mean, in India and places like that, it's it's Android now. Yeah. Sure, but Apple is not even competing in on that right. uh, segment. So it's a little bit unfair to include all of those um, cheaper Android phones as well. All right, I've tried to avoid... Well, that's not unfair. It's yeah. just... It, let's say, okay, capitalism. you're looking at a different... different. Uh, well, uh, it's a strategy, picture. right? It's a strategy. And and, and, and what, what, you know, Eric Schmidt said years ago is that the strategy for Android was with a free operating system, you'd end up with more users, you would thus end up with more developers, and you would thus take over. And the price point is exactly part of the strategy. There's a slide, though, if you look at um, the one of the documents that we've been talking about from the Discovery. Yeah. This is an Apple internal executive retreat around strategy from last year, so April, looking forward to 2014 strategy. And this is the slide I put at the top of my article because I thought it was like crazy to see this in kind of an Apple slide. The headline is, Consumers Want What We Don't Have. And it talks about Big growth in the smart world. phones. Growth in the smartphone market is coming from two places. Yep. One of them is phones that are cheap, and one of them is phones that are big. Yep. And at the time, they didn't sell either of those. Now that they have a little bit of a cheaper phone. That does lead uh, us to maybe believe the rumor we've heard that there will be a big iPhone for the next uh, release sometime later this year. Well, they definitely recognize that weakness. Yeah. And which, which you know, I'm sorry, I'm not going to have Apple fanboys that come after me, but if, if that's your innovation, let's take the same thing and make it a little bigger. That's not terribly inspiring. Well, it's so <laughs> yes, no, it's true. <laughs> no, I agree. I completely agree. The thing, the thing I want to challenge is this idea that there needs to be constant, incredible innovation in in that space. You know, we had a, a, maybe three incredible years when that the 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 new types of smartphones arrived, but then nothing has really become incredibly innovative. I mean, but that's has, the problem exactly, Patrick. I mean, Apple charges a premium because Apple is supposed to be Wowie, and if it doesn't bring new Wowie out, it ain't worth the premium. Their premium is there for the. It, it, it's not necessarily for the innovation. I mean, they've been selling Macs that have not been that innovative for a very premium price for a long time. Uh, the the build quality, the image, you, you know, that's I think what their core uh, uh, Wowie uh, ness if we're making up words, uh, comes from. It's not necessarily from the... the we, we sort of have this weird uh, uh, idea now that Apple is failing is there, if they're not revolutionizing the market with every product they come out with. And historically, I don't think they've done that uh, uh, with every new product they, they come out with. It, it happens every, you know, three, four years. Uh, but I think people are expecting a little bit too much, are being a little bit unreasonable in their expectations. Let me introduce you to my Chromebook. <laughs> he loves his uh, Chromebook. Yeah. 
Although, yeah. why anyone would spend that much money for a computer that doesn't do anything? Oh, here, do we, go. Anything. here we go. <laughs> it's a browse <laughs> is beyond me. I just don't All understand. All we do is browse. Well, I do a few other things. Maybe that's Like it. what? Like what? Eh, write Python code. I don't know. Ooh. <laughs> <sighs> Edit video. Edit photos. That kind of thing. Uh, let us uh, take a little break. I, I've been putting it off, but I guess we have to talk about Brendan Ike. I'd be uh, eager to hear what you think. Mm, oh, geez, Very I don't know. It's hard. I don't know. It's hard. Um, uh, anyway, we'll take a break. We'll come back and talk about it. Our show today brought to you by Atlassian, the folks who make Jira. Um, don't ask me <laughs> what Jira does because I don't have to worry about it. But if you are managing a big code project, you probably know about Jira. You know all about it. And uh, I'm sure you're interested in what it can do for you. It is the world's most powerful, customizable issue and project management system. So the whole idea is it's something that will capture your workflow so you can take action on what's important, stay up to date on the activity going on around you, plan, track, work smarter and faster. Great for your team. Oh, he, oh, we do, do, do. This is the, do, 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 the jazzy video from Atlassian. Uh, a simple interface for collaborating with each other in real time, by the way. This is not... You know, this is not Twitter here. Uh, seamlessly, well, I mean, you, you have a Twitter-like in, interface, but there's a whole lot more. There's a full a real-time activity stream going on. And you could do anything you want, pretty much. Any business process you can imagine. Your team can work the way you want. You define your own issue types, track the information that, that matters to you. They've got email, chat, app mentions, RSS. You can monitor streams of activity, self-updating reports, uh, dashboards, uh, really significantly angry nerds bug workflow i like this <laughs> this is a good project they've got here angry nerds they're making <laughs> it works of course with uh, git and uh, that means you can follow the, the code from development all the way through delivery in a single system uh the planning docs in there the files and changes in the code repository all the way you can even build onto jira yourself a lot of people do with atlassian's rest apis it's easy Flexible and simple enough for a five-person startup, but powerful and reliable enough for a 100,000-person enterprise. That's why 70% of the Fortune 100 uses Jira. NASA uses Jira. 25,000 companies are using Jira. Jira is at the heart of Atlassian's offerings for managing your entire application dev process from concept to launch. And I want you to try it right now at Atlassian.com slash twit. You'll get more information you can try it free for 30 days, and it's really affordable, as little as $10 a month for up to 10 users. Atlassian, A-T-L-A-S-S-I-A-N, Atlassian.com slash twit to find out more about Jira. I do hope they make that Angry Nerds game. <laughs> we could use that. So Kara wrote the story, and I think that's great, uh, about Brendan Eich resigning. Uh, he was one of the creators of Mozilla, one of the founders of Mozilla, and had been tapped by the board uh, to become CEO not well, not so long ago, like a week ago, right? About three weeks ago. Three weeks, weeks ago. Uh, almost instantly, three members of the board resigned. There was a Twitter. Though, though some say that was they were already planning to resign. Well, they didn't so, deny that it had to uh, do John with Ike. came out on the record in the New York Times this weekend saying that he did resign because of the Ike. Yeah, yeah. okay. It, yeah, I mean, there wasn't any attempt to, to separate the two events. There was a... No, there was. Oh, there was? Uh, there was. Yeah, there was some kind of fuzziness around it. I mean, particularly yeah. because John Lilly was the former CEO. Gary Kovacs was the former CEO. Maybe it was time for them to yeah, move on as right. they're naming a new one. There's like some plausible reasons, but Lilly actually did say, yeah. uh, or he was quoted as saying in the New York Times, I um, would, didn't want to be involved when he was CEO. The controversy is over... Uh, the fact that he, uh, Ike, donated $1,000 to Prop 8, which was the anti-gay marriage initiative that passed in California. Uh, that became uh, public only because the databases are public, as they should be um, in, uh, in this country. And uh, so you can see who gave money to what. Um, okay, Cupid kind of took the most extreme point of view by forbidding people using... Firefox to use their site. No, they didn't forbid you. They they put up a pop up suggesting you use something else. Well, they Sorry. didn't. They didn't lock you out. They just said don't use it. Yeah. Oh, all right. 
They're calling this clicktivism, which is a terrible word. Um, oh, I, I misunderstood. I thought that you couldn't use Firefox. So they really just took it as an opportunity to, to raise the issue. And, and then you can move on. Yeah, plenty of people have done that. They've, you know, said, oh, you might want to come back with a more modern browser, not usually over political issues, right. but in this case, similar to that. Yeah. Um, on uh, March 28th, Ike blogged. He was sorrow at having caused pain. Um, he did not, however, uh, say, I now support gay marriage. Um, I don't know what, Jeff, I... You put me on the spot because I don't know what don't to know. say about and then, this. And then afterwards, Andrew Sullivan, um, obviously well-known gay political writer, argued that, that gays had basically put a head on a stake and this was going to be bad for the cause of gay rights. Uh, Mark Andreessen, who had worked with him at um, uh, uh, the browser company, That's obviously... Good. Thank you very much. See, age, Les, don't get old, I'm telling you. Uh, <laughs> and Netscape uh, said uh, that this was, you know, uh, uh, going too far. Uh, Josh Marshall wrote a very interesting column today saying, listen, nobody has a right to be a CEO, and a CEO is a different job. And he said, if somebody just plucked out somebody from, from a federal agency and said, we don't like what you, you say, you're fired, that wouldn't work. But it, but but if, if a if the head of, if a cabinet member came out with a with a controversial view like this, then people would understand saying you got to go. Well, there, there's legitimate concern if you're a, in the LGBT community that maybe you're not going to get treated well at Mozilla uh, in a, under uh, Ike. Uh, right, he, which I think, I think is a legitimate concern. He, well, he made hand, a point of posting, a, what, what, believe it or not, it, it, I mean, I don't, I don't know whether this is sufficient, but he made a post on the blog saying, uh, you know, I'm, I'm committed to equality in everything we do. I want to work with the LBG, LGBT community, um, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe that wasn't enough. It does feel a little like a witch hunt, I got to say. That's, that's the yeah, issue. Yeah, I think that it's, it, there's a couple things going on here that are important. One is that Mozilla is not just any company. They're a community of activists that work together on a nonprofit, all contributing, and they have this... They have this kind of radical openness of a culture where they actually encourage employees to criticize their CEO on Twitter if they feel like criticizing them. That even wouldn't be the case other places. So I think it's less about um, feeling like you wouldn't be treated well at work and more about feeling like you're on this mission-driven um, line of work. And um, if your CEO has a, a closed-minded approach to something that's crucial to how you define your values, that's it's hard to reconcile that with the notion of openness. But, but Liz, and, and, and you know, I, I, number one, I'm 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 resolutely in favor of gay marriage, resolutely against the proposition, uh, and, and agree with you what you just said. That the the question then becomes though, where are the lines? What are the right. and, and I'm sorry, this this fits in with the Kevin Rose story, because mm -hmm. at some point, if you become dogmatic, and don't allow other voices or other ways to view the world then you have an issue of openness. And, and mind you, I couldn't disagree more with Ike's stand on this issue. But it's his and right to do it. At some point, at some point, <sighs> isn't it? Uh, it, it, it it's is. okay. It he, he, he should be allowed to have his opinion. Yeah. Should it cost him his job is the question. And then you make a good point, which is his job is in an, a very, you know, an open source project. It's an open community. And, he's, and he'd be managing gay employees. Should he be... You know, would would he be fair and equal to them? I I believe he would have been. Yeah, I think and that there's also like, this aspect of the, the witch hunt is moving faster than ever, right? Like this online discussion is moving yeah, faster, but true. also the discussion about this particular issue. Um, you know, eight years. What, sorry, sorry, 2008. So six years ago, um, Proposition Eight passed in California. A majority of people right. who voted voted yes on Proposition Eight, um, and that's basically equivalent to. I mean, it's a little bit more to give money to it, but. He was on the side of the majority six years ago. So yes, the online witch is moving faster than ever, but also the, you know, the which is the right and which is the wrong side of history is moving faster than ever as well. Exactly. And so really you're well living said. in that new dynamic. And, and and that's what Josh Marshall's point, which I think was a good one, that says that the victors in a moral war need to give the losers the chance to come in time. And and and, and I think that's true. I think I think that the, the victory of gay and lesbian LGBT communities about these issues was magnificent. And you're right, Liz, swift. So swift that some take time to catch up. And so President Obama 
himself had to catch up on this issue. He was it was not that long right. ago at all that he said, I'm all for gays, but I'm against this marriage thing. Right. And he had to catch up. And the, the, I guess the issue very for Ike was he wasn't making up, an yeah. effort to catch up. By the way, at exactly the same not. year. Yeah. Yes. When he was elected, yeah. And Meg Whitman, who I think is maybe an even better comparison because she's the Republican CEO of a technology company um, and a former candidate a as a Republican right. for right. governor of California, she said in uh, February that she had changed her mind and now is in support of gay marriage. But it's even, let's, you know, we're talking about people, you know, coming around and sure, let's say he doesn't. And like Jeff, I have to say, I'm very much in favor of gay marriage. So that's not even the issue. But the guy was not like a, a, an incredibly militant person, it seems. He, he wasn't, where, the issue is not that he was at rallies, that he was trying to raise money, that he was, he just gave a thousand dollars for a cause that he thought he was, you know, falling on one side of, of the issue. Uh, and if he is being, uh, uh, he's being stigmatized for it in this way, six or, you know, six years later, he's being stigmatized for an idea that, yes, is not very, uh, you know, is probably going against the openness that the, the, the company Mozilla wants to promote. But it's still very concerning that he's being stigmatized like this and not just stigmatized, you know, forced out for the extent of what he did, which doesn't seem uh, to warrant that kind of ire. Yeah, Patrick, I think, yeah. I think, I think the, the, as we're, as we're going to argue more and more and more about protecting the internet for the sake of free speech, then we have to decide as, as an internet culture what that means. What, what is the level of tolerance that we have about different opinions? Um, and I consider it a wrong opinion, flat out. But sure. um, at some point, you know, you defend the rights of others to have those opinions. We defend the notion, you know, we make fun of Erdogan for getting rid of, for, for shutting down Twitter and YouTube because of opinions he doesn't like. Did the militant side of Mozilla shut down Ike for an opinion they don't like. And I don't like that opinion either, but we have to decide what is the culture of free speech on the net. I've been taking a lot of, of I, we've had this issue very recently uh, about gay marriage in, uh, in France and uh, unbelievably it became an issue in France. I thought it wasn't going to be, I thought it was, you know, just you weird Americans that would make this an issue. <laughs> um, but, um, and I've been taking a little bit of crap, but we've had a, an open di dialogue with, with my followers and, and the people who want to discuss this issue. And that's exactly the problem, uh, Jeff, what you're saying. We have to be tolerant of other people's ideas. And he's not going around. I think that's what I was uh, uh, trying to emphasize in, in what I said earlier. You know, he's not uh, running around drowning puppies or strangling people. You know, he, he just expressed his idea. Yes, a little what bit. What if it were racism? Because, what if he'd... What if he'd uh... Good question, Leo. You know, I mean, uh, I always try to define it in those terms because... Uh, uh, and the reason I do is because um, t as times change, uh, bigotry and, and uh, changes. Sure. And so it's now pretty well accepted that if you don't like somebody because of the color of their skin, well, that's clearly wrong. And I think we're rapidly moving to that situation for people. Uh, if you don't like people because of who they love, mm. you're, there's some, there, we, we now know that that's wrong. But we're catching up on that. What if it were racism, which was kind of widely agreed that's a problem? I think there would be no question if he, if there were some smoking gun that said in an email sure. in 2008, you know, I don't think we should hire black people at uh, at uh, Mozilla. He would be out. He wouldn't have been well, considered. Here's, here's the question, well, Leo. That's not even what, what he said, Leo. He's not. He didn't say I don't. Oh, think okay, we you're right. Hire you're right. People. I don't think black people should be allowed to wear, marry white people. What if he'd said no, that? What, what if he'd said yeah, that? No, that's but, make it analogous here. What if he had said that in 1965? Yes, and I think that we did, in fact, after the Civil Rights Act, after uh, f finally integration came to this country and we still have a long way to go, I think we did forgive a lot of people uh, for, <laughs> not George Wallace maybe, but a lot of people uh, for racism. I think we re recognized that times had changed and people had come along. Now, Ike has never repudiated his point of view. He still, for all we know, still has that point of view. Well, that's the other issue. Is he, I thought about that too. You know, what if he'd said, well, I changed my mind. Mm -hmm. But then 
that means the mob made him change his mind to keep him. He, yeah, keep his job. I think it was the original act. But I, not to be the stickler in here, but one other point that came out in reporting is that, at least according to the folks who are talking about it, which is which is not Ike except for a very brief blog post, um, Mozilla contends that they did not ask him to step down. He they asked down. him to not serve as CEO. Oh. And, uh, and he decided he needed to leave the company. Um, so I thought it was an interesting distinction of him. Um, he was ultimately the one who kind of ran from uh, the furor that he'd ignited. Yeah, but if you, okay, but if you'd been asked to step down as CEO uh, after three weeks, you probably would leave the company, right? I mean, you're not going to stick around. That, I don't Well, he'd you. been there for 15 years yeah. as in a senior technical and, role. And the thing and to point out, he was a senior technical guy. He was one of the creators. He was not just some guy off the street. I mean, if they brought in Chainsaw Al Dunlop, It'd be right, different. That was Josh Marshall's point, that it's different to be part of it rather than be the figurehead. Right. He was a founder. Oh, and Josh said that that means that you have a higher standard. Is that right? As CEO. Yeah. That's a tough one. I don't know. One third of consumers are abandoning wearables. Hundreds of Galaxy Gear smartwatches listed on eBay, according to Charles Arthur, they're writing for The Guardian. Is the wearable market dead already? I hear a lot of good things from people who buy Pebbles. They've sold hundreds of thousands. Was it four hundred thousand? I was going to reach for my my. Uh, That's your number class, of the week. Not here. Yeah. Um, but I do think that wearables are not quite accepted yet. Well, it's the market is not dead already. It hasn't started yet. Yes, that's, maybe that's, that's the it. problem. Nobody's made the one that we need. That yeah, we want. exactly. Nest is. <laughs> Going to stop selling its smoke alarms uh, because of, and this was a feature they touted in it. Yeah. And everybody's had this happen where you you start cooking bacon and the smoke alarm goes off. And you and who doesn't who has never done this? You wave your wave your newspaper the smoke alarm till it goes off. Well, now here's the beauty of the nest: smoke alarm goes off. You just wave your hand, and it says, "Oh, you must be making bacon," and shuts up. Well. I always wondered about this. Apparently, Nest feels like maybe that's dangerous. It was test in testing. It was discovered that you could accidentally dismiss the alarm and maybe burn to death. <laughs> hey, everybody, get out! Get out! <laughs> get, get out! out get, get out! We're get dying! Out. Uh, so Nest has halted sales. Uh, Tony Fidel uh, has recommended users disable the feature, and Nest is going to update units. That will allow it to work correctly. If your Nest Protect is connected to the Wi-Fi, well, we're just going to turn it off for you right now. <laughs> it did seem like a, maybe a little too easy to disable the uh, smoke detector. <laughs> uh, that is not good news. Nest. Now, did the Nest Google acquisition go through? Uh, not yes, yet. It's done. It is done. So it is it's a done. Google company. Yeah, they're still based at their own office in Palo Alto, okay. but they're now wholly owned by Google. Well, they don't need to sell that silly old smoke detector anyway. Who needs it? We'll make something else. That's a good point, I guess. Maybe it uh, gets old businesses out, swept out of the way. Yeah. Might be a good I was. I mean, I was surprised that, that there's no record that this has actually happened to anyone, right? They just said that this right. happened in their, in their own testing. There's a possibility. But, you know, you don't mess around with safety equipment. Yeah, and that was. It, and when I heard about it, I thought, ah, as much as I'd like that, I, I, should it be easy to disable a smoke detector? Oh, stop it. <laughs> We were talking at the beginning of the show about how our TVs wake up and say, what do you want when I just move my hand? So maybe this all should be disabled. It's crazy, though, that they just have two products and one, one of them is gone. now off the market. Hey, I'm telling you, sell to Google. You can do anything you want. I think we have completed the list of stories that I had brought to the table We've even thrown in one from Patrick Beja. Congratulations. You have net neutrality now. And you made me yes. salute Very the EU. <laughs> I salute you. Wow. I get a double American salute. <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed <laughs> and intimidated. Um, but you still don't have Netflix, so who cares? <laughs> it's, they're coming. 
And the funny thing is, they're probably not. They're coming to France. Uh, they're in other places in Europe, but apparently they don't want to. They don't want to establish their headquarters in France. They're going to go to Luxembourg. Yes, because, because of regulations. Of regulations. <laughs> and for as much as the government is angry about this, they they can't do anything because that's how the world works. So the chat room is reminding me that I did uh, did not confirm. We weren't sure last week when we talked about Goat Simulator. If this was an April Fool's joke or real, it is absolutely real. And in fact, we have now spent many hours on our air playing Goat Simulator during the week. So just go back and look at the tapes. And you too can, for $10 on Steam, enjoy the Goat Simulator. It's actually a really fun game. I saw that there's a, there was an April Fool's joke that has continued to go viral, and now people don't know it's April Fool's Which related, one is which that? Is that um, Beyonce is looking for an intern who she will pay in Pepsi and three selfies. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> taken with her. Was, 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 that a, was that a joke or is it real? Yeah, it was not from Beyonce. Um, but now I, I keep, continue to see irate tweets of people saying like, come on, Beyonce, like you need to pay your interns. And <sighs> <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't even her April Fool's <sighs> joke. I really do not. I tell you, what a word. God, I hate that day. I hate April Fool's. <laughs> it was not, we talked about this on This Week in Google. It was not as bad this year as it has been in the past. For some yeah. reason, Google did not uh, do the 800 April Fool jokes they often do. Well, they were, they were, they were, they were later. Matt Cutts changing his shirt color. That was cute. Yeah. It was cute. I, I liked, didn't know what it was. And it was a joke. I liked was that. the uh, Otto Hoffsum where. Uh, that was good. Yeah. But you, you, you knew it. it was, the effort wasn't to, you know, in this age of native advertising and upworthy. You won't believe this. And all these things that try to manipulate us. The problem with April Fool's is this effort to say, I gotcha, I gotcha. I know. It really was irritating. Whereas the things that are just cute, like Hoff appearing in your picture, fine. I'm cool with that because it's not trying to manipulate me. It's not trying to fool me with anything. It's just a joke. And a joke is okay. I did get, by the way, a number more uh, uh, Hoffsums as time went by, uh, Hasselhoff appearing in my photos on Google+. Plus. <laughs> I th I got a ton of them. I got a ton. <laughs> they and you know what? Uh, after April Fools is over, they didn't take Hasselhoff out of my pictures. <laughs> They're still there. So Google. That's still my favorite. You got some splaining to do. <laughs> <laughs> Liz Gaines, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Liz writes regularly for Recode.net, a great site. It's the uh, the reincarnated all all things D, all things digital. It's just fabulous. Thank you. Good, good, good. just knocking it out of the park every single day. Must read. Uh, thanks to Patrick Beja at patrickbeja.com. He's at not Patrick on the Twitter. I am. And uh, any podcast you want to plug or anything like that? Um, well, you know, I still have uh, Le Rendezvous Tech, which is my French tech news show. Um, well, that sounds still... so good when you say that. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> can you say Le Rendezvous Roquefort? Uh, no. I can say, I can one-up you. I, I will say Le Rendezvous Camembert. Oh, Ooh. très bien. C'est bon. C'est bon. So if you, bon. if you speak French or want to learn French or, you know, have anything to do with France and tech, uh, Le Rendezvous Tech is where you want to go. And is there French dancing? There is. Uh, that's a question that's automatically answered by, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I want you, I want you to, uh, I want you to uh, do a segment of the show, uh, or maybe just even do a whole new show, Les Jeunes de Paris. <laughs> that would be awesome. That can be arranged if uh, <laughs> I am paid well enough. <laughs> Jeff Jarvis, a surprise guest. Wasn't planned, but I'm so glad Thank to you have you. Thank you for in. I, yeah. I, I love this. Always a I, pleasure. You, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, you see, we're still waiting here for, you could have had people on the East Coast. Game of Thrones is not on yet. All right, all right. All right. Yeah, but no, they were having <laughs> I mean, parties. They oh, were... They're watching the end of Pitch Perfect again. Oh, I love that show. And speaking of Anna Kendrick, let's do some French dancing. Here's the cup song. <laughs> From Pitch Perfect. Thank you, Jeff. We'll see you on Twig on Wednesday. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Hey, real quickly before we go, let's find out what's coming up in the week ahead with Mr. Michael Elgin.
On the week ahead, the NAB show starts today and runs through Thursday. We're sending Father Robert Balasair to cover it. Also, Natalie Morris joins me as our guest co-anchor on Tech News Today all week, so don't miss a single episode. Back to you, Leo. Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 18, uh, sorry, 1700 UTC for your daily dose of Tech News. And, of course, don't forget Tech News Tonight, which is at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. So you can get your evening and your morning fix of news, news, news. We do Twit Sunday afternoons, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 2200 UTC on twit.tv. Please watch live. We love having the chat room. You miss all the profanity if you don't watch live. And there's a lot of it. But if you can't, on-demand, uh, pure versions, expurgated versions are available at twit.tv and wherever you get your finest netcasts. Please subscribe. You'll get it each and every week. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to our live studio audience. We appreciate having you here. And we'll see you next time. Another Twit is in the can. Yay.